Flyers, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm the Flying Fabio, and welcome back to the channel. Hello, everybody. Ah, doing much better today. Doing much, much better today. Thank you all for understanding. I appreciate that. Um, not a good, uh, not a good mental day yesterday. But uh, hey, man, it uh, it happens. I'm okay with it. I hope you're okay with it. Um, 
I'm better now. Yes. All right. So, Wings IFR flight number two. But before that, how are you guys? It's good to be here. Good to see you. Good to be seen. Thanks, Chrome. Appreciate that, buddy. Appreciate that. You know, Chrome, I uh, I have to say that I I'm very lucky, right? Uh, very privileged. Hey, Noise Boy Mike, let's go, man. Thank you Noise very Boy much for that. Mike, Good to see you, buddy. For eight months. Be missing you. Privilege to be in a place where I can do that. I can call a day off, right? Um, I don't do it lightly. I'll I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, I feel a pretty a pretty big commitment to the community, financial or otherwise. To me, that's not how I look at it, right? Um, but I also think that it's, if you have the opportunity, then you should, right? If you're in a place where you can take a day when you need a day, you should. Um, if you need a day, you need a day. Uh, at Flight Safety, for example, for the last, I don't know, seven, eight years I was there, um, the policy changed and basically it was like that. Listen, if you're sick, just don't come in. Right? Just stay home. Don't worry about work. You'll be here when you come back, kind of thing. Hey, Scum. Thank you very much, buddy. Let's go. Um, You know what I mean? And uh, they encouraged you to stay away if you're sick so you didn't get other people sick. Because before that, it was an old school company. It was kind of like, you know, hey, man, you know, we got to work. I don't really care if you're sick or not, kind of thing. So um, that's what I mean, right? If you're in a place where if you're sick, they encourage you to stay home, then stay home, right? That's the right thing to do. Um, so I feel very privileged to be in a place where I can take a day like I did yesterday. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I think the world is changing a little bit more towards that. You know what I mean? Uh, there's a lot of modern companies that are a lot more understanding of people and people's needs. Um, and there's also jobs where, hey, man, you can't, you can't call off or at least we need a plan B. Um, but... As uh, besides not having content uh, for a day, which I'm sure sucks, right? Um, Lee Oscar five just resubscribed. We can get away with it. Months. New so we, we we're not sacrificing any lives, five. right? They have given twenty. So I wanted to address it because I wanted to explain that I don't do that lightly, um, because there are people that invest in the channel again financially or not, right? Invest their time, uh, invest their their knowledge into the channel. Um, and I feel obliged to have this conversation. So, I hope, uh, yeah, I hope you guys understand. I think you do. Yeah, cutes, I agree. Life is evolving. Social, right? The social side of life is evolving. There's a lot of other sides that are evolving too, but socially, we're evolving also. In some ways, in some ways, we may be regressing socially, right? But in some ways, we're advancing. Thank you, Rebound. Appreciate that. Thanks, Rookie. I appreciate... Listen, it's not that I don't feel like I don't I don't deserve it. All right? Let me be clear. I took the day because I felt I needed a day and I could take the day. But I wanted to have the conversation out in the open. Right? So it's not... I don't know. So people don't assume things. You know what I mean? Hmm. <clears throat> All is your all being. Well, not just mine. Everybody's, right? Thanks, Ibanez. Appreciate that, man. Yeah, Rocking Rimmer. And again, that's the same for everybody, right? In life. In Gal life. 515 just resubscribed for two months. Gal. Why, thank you so much. Let's go. Thank you. Thanks, Luxionic. I appreciate that, buddy. I appreciate that. <laughs> tubes way to get back on track tubes i like that and everybody else that uh that wrote some lovely things here that i was reading i didn't read them out loud hey scub um i i haven't looked at the patch notes listen we have time we have time because we're doing ifr flight number two today and i i'm gonna risk it and say we're also doing number three and maybe even number four. They link together, and they're not that long, and they're really cool. So, Casper, two thousand five. Uh, Casper, just man, you guys, this community, you guys this don't even let me like get talking to some about something. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Um, so, Scob, maybe we need to look at them now? I think it's in stream links from the last stream, right? Um, I know they're rather big, but maybe there's just like a section of them that uh, we need to focus on. Let me see. Do we have them here? I'm sure we do. I'm sure we do. Maybe not. Maybe I need it. Oh, Luxionica, sorry about the sim crash on that little time lapse. That sucks, dude. Sucks. Hey, citizen, you're feeling more positive too. That's awesome, dude. Sorry, I can't help but go back and read, man. I just love your comments, guys. I'm sorry. What am I gonna do? Booms. Posted a GIF in the chat of how you started today's stream in light of yesterday. All right. All right. All right. Let's go see. Hold on. <laughs> Let's go see. <laughs> see why I go back and read chat? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. That's a guy that's not full of himself. One bit. <laughs> Booms, that was awesome. Thank you, buddy. That was great. You just made my day. That was awesome. <laughs> Leia, como estamos? Uh, let's see. I love how Tubes is just like... Tubes just keeps bringing us back to reality in an awesome way, right? Everybody's like, morning, don't worry about yesterday, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Tubes is like, sup, nerds. Love it. Love it. I know, JM Knights, the okay man, right? By the way, real registration, I love it. I can't get this aircraft to take my Papa Tango registration. I don't know what's going on. Does anybody have this, uh, this problem? Aspen. Aspen. Wait a second, buddy. I missed that. 13 months. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. That's awesome. Okay. Hey, Slarty. We'll wait here for you as many days as you need. Oh, Slarty, you're too kind. You're all too kind. All too kind. Old school. SGT just resubscribed and Alpha Whiskey. Months. Oh my gosh. MN gifted a tier one sub to Robert SGT. Damn you guys. I can't. That, that Mussolini, I can't. Gerald no, R. A. Just oh, no not that. Gifted a tier one sub to I, can't, I might as well just eat some beans. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah, the swagger, right, old school? Thank you so much for those three, man. That's awesome. Who knew Fabio was it up? Actually, actually, that's one thing that I have never tried is tattoos. Um, I've been lucky enough to, man, I've had a lot of experiences in my life. <laughs> Be at my, like I had an awesome grandfather that uh, after his, his, his wife, my grandmother died. Um, he took me and my sister traveling a lot whenever he could. Um, so from a young age, I saw a bunch of South America. It was awesome, right? I, I've, I've had a lot of, I'm a very lucky guy. Um, hey, Fierce Wolf, let's go, buddy. Thank you for four months already. What? Thank you. Um, Fierce Wolf, I've just been resubscribed for four just months. Super lucky, man. Super lucky to have those, uh, <laughs> those experiences. Um, hold on, I'm still thinking about that, uh, uh that word. Sorry, that keeps throwing me. But, Tattooing myself is not an experience I've had and I don't think I will to be honest. I don't think there's anything I Don't know maybe there is I don't know. I don't know Thank you, sir. I See it Scob. Let's go have a look man. Let's go have a look and then we'll talk about today's flight Okay, by the way as usual Boston is opening uh, in an hour and 15 minutes from now so they open an hour and a half after we start the stream. That gives us time to do our planning, say hellos, do some housework, and then we get going, right? Um, but needless to say, 
the first flight of today, IFR flight number two, is a flight down to Providence, uh, which is uh, pretty close. Now, Providence Town, Providence, and it's, as you'll see, also very simple from an IFR perspective. There's no planning involved, and you'll see why. Um, we have two other flights we're going to try and do today because this first one is pretty small. But uh, that also means we don't have to do a lot of planning. So we have some time to go look at this, for example. <clears throat> Hello, Hayden. How are you, man? Tim Alays, let's go, buddy. Tim Thank you very much. Just resubscribe for four months. Mm hmm. Hey, Skip, how you doing, man? I'm much better today. Thank you, buddy. How are you? Yeah, that's the other thing, citizen. I don't really have anything I want because I've never really considered it seriously, right? But I know some people like you, like they, if they did something, that something would be very expensive. Which is another obstacle, right? Thank you, Timolaze. How are you, buddy? And by the way, Timolaze, how is your whole setup doing? Oh, how is your home simulator there? Are you happy with it? Four months already. Zasran, let's go. Crumb. Oh my god. To show. <laughs> nah, nah. You're looking great, Crumb. <laughs> you're looking great. Adventure 494. Adventure. Just let's go, dude. For four months. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Zesran, how you doing, man? How you doing? All right, so uh, if you look at the delivery option for the Piper, one of them is called Custom, and that one you can change the tail number. Oh, that's the only one, Ibanez. Really? Oh, wait a second, dude. Did this change recently? Because I'm pretty Five sure that I've flown different arrows with Just my tail number on it before. Ibanez Axeman gifted a tier one sub to ride underscore tech three hundred ninety five. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Ibanez, let's go, buddy. Thank you very much. Siberian, thanks for the follow, dude. Thanks for being here. Ibanez with five the tier one subs. Just let's go. For two months. Ibanez Thank you, sir. Axeman gifted a tier one sub to Wuda 42. You'd be able to tell via Volanta logs. Oh, yeah, because it records. Oh, so if you have a custom one, that's the one that Volanta picks up. Edo! Hello, sir. How's Japan? Arctic Turn is here. By the way, I had to look up what an Arctic Turn was. I didn't know what a turn was. And if you don't know, it's... Uh... Look it up. Let me Google that for you. Just Captain Harlock, months, uh, is there months. anywhere mm -hmm. online uh, one can learn more about flying IFR? I find that it is a bit uh, s step up in the wings flight between VFR and IFR. It is, Captain Harlock. It is. Um, so, I don't know if Boston has videos on this. They have a lot of ground school in the form of like PowerPoint slides right um i've been told recently that i have to call that a slide deck not a presentation anymore otherwise i sound too old so they have slide deck presentations no i'm just kidding uh anyways they have some some videos that uh i recall seeing from some previous flights some of them may cover some ifr stuff i'm not really sure I'm not really sure. Um, but that being said, that being said, um, the information is out there. So, for example, now it, it does require some reading, right, Captain Harlock? And, and uh, what I mean by that is it, it requires some self starting if you don't want to pay for somebody to teach you. Um, I'm glad to do it here uh, for free. I People donate to the channel, right? But I, I don't expect any of that but I don't have a structured set of lessons. Um, but you can go and get, for example, the IFR handbook from the FAA. Now, maybe you're going to fly under IASA, it's, you want something different, but I'm saying, the information is out there. The IFR handbook has everything you need to know to be an IFR pilot, even how to read charts, right? 
How to Fly IFR. He's in that book. Uh, but it requires you being able to absorb that information by just reading a book. Some people can do that, some people can't. So it depends on what flavor you're looking for. If you want more guided instruction, I think you can find some stuff online, but I don't know that I have anything ready to recommend. What about you guys? I feel like I'm forgetting something. I'm sure there's some stuff. By the way, there is some stuff for The Sim too. There's some IFR sort of lessons for The Sim, but I've never tried them. I don't know how good they are. Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Zestran, are you serious? <laughs> well, Jinek, the, the problem with that is it's very happenstance, right? Hey, Rob, thank you very much for that, dude. Appreciate that. Just resubscribed for six months. You know, you're welcome, Captain Harlock. So just if you are going to go down the FAA route, just simply search for FAA IFR handbook. You will find a link to it right away. Uh, it's a PDF you can download. It's it's a very well written book, uh, but it's kind of dry. Right, so it's it's not hard to follow if you can follow something. I'm saying this because I can sit down and read a book like that, but not everybody can. So I just have to set expectations. Oh, Dextro, there you go. And that's for flying in the UK, I'm assuming. Vatstar. Shubashi, that's the one I was forgetting about. I've never tried Vatstar, but that's the one I was forgetting about. That's it. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, so release notes. For Sim Update 6. Stability several crashes, okay. Uh, more optimization. Several crashes have been added, okay. More optimization work is... I'm sorry, Asobo. You've earned that one. <laughs> Stick burn. More optimization work has been performed, including performance issue with real-time air traffic. Okay, improvements in installation logic. Okay, well, I mean, any improvement in installation is... is, wow, well needed. Navigation. <clears throat> UK, thanks, Dextro. Yeah, thanks, man. So, question. I feel night flying in MSFS is too dark. It's difficult to find taxiways and whatnot. Anyone know of a lighting mod to improve things? Yeah, cute. I mean, there are nights that are that dark, but not every night is. Sassanach, what's going on, man? Doing well today, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Rockin' Brimmer. Hopefully, uh, they made the AI aircraft get off the runway quicker. I don't know. I don't use them. New Iraq, okay. Uh, improvement on offset, uh, localizer of the approaches. Okay, I don't understand what the improvement is, but uh, we'll take it. Updated in the sim magnetic variation. Okay, fix it. This uh, they have to do every once in a while. Fixed ATC. Announcing a DME arc on, uh, approach. Okay, separated different airways uh, with the same name than F data. Fixed case. Interesting. Fixed cases of uh, corruption in town. Okay, weather activated gust tweaking custom weather settings. This is pretty nice because remember we couldn't really. You could tweak the frequency of the gust, remember? I wonder what, what this tweak's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're cleared for the 340 nautical mile DME approach. Or DME arc, right? Ambient pressure is now smoothly calculated across the entire air column. Mmm. Mmm. Improved ADIS cloud layer reporting. Oh, okay. VR, um, I don't do VR, but hey, VR people, here's some stuff. And moving on. Activity, uh, fixed friend status is up here. I'll leave it on screen just so you can see while I read activity. Fixed friend status, offline friends, we're still okay. Better handling of edge cases, give fixed Balkan bush trip, uh, fixed conversion error in POH, takeoff speed, interesting. Fixed issue where they, okay. Just flights in the Olympus scenery would be good airport for a here. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Is that uh, La Palma? Luxionica. Yes. Tubes, yes. Well, I think so. Uh, 
Ah, it came out today. Nice. Oh, man. That's a lot of fixes, huh? Prevented live AI aircraft. Okay. It affects the clouds, water density on air. Aha! There it is. Source of dragon flying through clouds. By factor 10. I'll tell you what, man. Factor of 10 here. Factor of 10 here. Somebody has fat fingers uh, right now in that team. <laughs> Altimeter reading should now properly coincide mathematically with atmospheric. Okay. Finally. Fixed physical altimeter so they can now display different values. Um, yeah, for sure, Kram. For sure. Really? Oh my god, gamer. Hold on. Let me just scroll. Holy crap. They have been busy bees. Okay, I'm not going to read this whole thing. This is insane. What? Okay, but this is very ominous. Because if they fixed this many things, that means they broke at least half of this many things, right? I'm sorry, Asobo. I'm sorry. That sounds so negative. I'm sorry, but... I mean, you know? Damn, that's a lot of stuff. Oof. <laughs> They're clam now. <laughs> They're clam. Oh. Uh, maybe, rookie, maybe. Holy moly. Holy moly. Hmm. Oh, look. They already have a TCA Boeing support. That's pretty awesome. And Velocity. Okay, that's pretty cool. Whatever else happens, this kind of... This kind of response speed... Pretty amazing. Because it tells me... That they're talking and working with, the, with these developers. That's great news right there. That is great news right there. So let's... Hey, listen. You gotta... <laughs> listen. Because we're already anticipating bad stuff, right? This is all good stuff. In theory, this is all fixes, all improvements. We're already anticipating a lot of stuff's gonna break. But let's celebrate the little victories. The fact that they're working with developers, implementing stuff in the sim at the same time it releases, such as hardware from Thrustmaster and Turtle Beach, that's great news. That is great news. That is great news. So look, this might have to do with that Gust tweak. Gust speed input slider uses logarithmic range for better precision. Huh, okay. <clears throat> could be mechanical, yeah, could be. Yeah. Peter, uh, do we have a price on the yoke? I think the answer is no. I think the answer is no. Right, chat? If I recall correctly, I mean, I watched a few different things, so I want to make sure I'm not crossing my my very weak memories here. Hmm. Hey, Peter. I didn't notice that question was from you, Peter. That's why I said, hey, Peter. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this right here, I I think this is really cool. Also because the terrain level of detail can now be increased to 400. It could be increased up to 200, right? But not only now it goes up to 400, so less stuff, less terrain morphing up close if you can do it. But the if you can do it sounds good too. Why? Because they said also that the performance at 400 is better than 200 was at launch. Now, I know at launch was launch, but I mean, I think a lot of people could still run 200 at launch. So, just saying. Kindly, what's going on? Here's Moren, what's going on, man? 279, but just, just, just a rumor. Might be more expensive. Metal inside, yes. Yeah, exactly, Krum. Exactly. But, nice that they did that too, I think. It's a good option to have. Hopefully you can run it. Right? Oh, hold on. Interesting. Uh -huh. 
I like that they go back and work on a lot of individual airports like this, you know? That that means they're reading the reports, right? And at uh, Zendesk. And they're fixing stuff. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I would say for both, Chris. I would say for both. But who knows? Let me see here what happened here. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Tuned. I wonder what that means, right? Sassimo 72. Okay. Right. Okay. Huh. Man, they are working. Because that's a lot of, like, little stuff. And you can tell that a lot of the stuff... It's probably stuff that people are just reporting, reporting, reporting. And they, you know, get to put on the queue, and they get to it. I love it. Rookie, let's see, under ATC. Was there a section for ATC? No. And avionics, VFR, World UI, peripherals, SDK. There's no section for ATC. Yeah, Shubashi, that's the... That's... That's why everybody's like... Ah! You know, you give, you give users a list of all these fixes. People rejoice. People are like, oh my god, that's amazing. Look at all these fixes. Us with this team were like, uh, why would you try to fix so much? You're gonna break half of that. So we'll know. We'll see. All right, rookie. Yeah. No problem, man. No problem. My pleasure. My pleasure. <clears throat> Hello, Ninja. Oh, nice little stretch there. Got my, uh, Rocking, rocking that NASA t-shirt today. Hey, let's see, JP. With a different kind of flavor. What is your favorite tail dragger in the sim? I can see. You narrowed it down. Uh, the Savage Cub, the Husky, the Sassam 70B, the uh, the Carbon Cub, the Captain. Yeah, it's the Savage. It's the Savage. I, I love, because on a plane like that, I love having that much power, right? To me, not every aircraft, like, I don't need an arrow with that much power. That's great, it's gonna do some insane climbs, but like, I don't really need to take off in 100 feet with an aircraft like the arrow. You, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna take it places that need that kind of performance, but a tail dragger, for sure, for sure. Ah, wait a second. Okay, he limited it to some small tail draggers. I had those in mind. If we're, if we're considering any tail dragger possible... Oh my god, well, the Junkers... Oof, man. Yeah, the Junkers might take the prize there. The Junkers might take the prize. Otherwise, it's gonna be the Savage because of the power. The, therefore, the, the capability that aircraft has as a bush aircraft is insane, right? You literally can land anywhere that has a clearing. So, um, I love that. Steve loved the Spitfire, but uh, I think the Junkers is just... Oh, you know? You know? I haven't tried the PC-6 yet. Yeah, it's quite possible, Crumb. Quite possible. Yes, Findo. That's a very, to me, very good news, right? Very good news. Um... They should focus some updates on only bug fixes. Let's not add anything new. Let's just fix stuff, because there is more than enough. More than enough. Yes, Peter, same here. With the beta, same here. Yeah, Rock, I think so too. I think so too. think now that the Xbox is out, they will be better. Okay, guys, let's get going on today's flight. So here we are. One more time. 
having a look at Boston Virtual ARTCC's Wings program. Today we're going to be doing IFR flight number two, VOR navigation. Hey, hey, we've done that once or twice on this channel. The second IFR rating is a short hop from Boston Airport to Providence Airport. It expands on the concept from IFR 1 and introduces VOR navigation and tech routes. Tech routes, huh? Hmm. Additionally, you'll fly an ILS approach at Providence to further hone your instrument approach skills. Nice. New 3 minutes of aviation video stream links for you if you need some in flight entertainment. Thanks, Luxionic. Appreciate that, buddy. Those are always good. Always good. Is it fresh? Whoa, Luxionica, that uh, Concorde. That's looking mighty nice. Eh, I mean, it was until I opened it up a little bigger and then I, was, I wasn't happy. I don't like the, uh, the lack of more polygons here. I mean, to me, this is a critical part of the shape of a Concorde. Look, you used a lot of polygons on the fuselage. Enough, right? You could have used more here. Come on. Come on, man. This one looks nice, though. Look at that PBR. Yeah, hammer nails. Thank you, man. I uh, I actually thought I might run into a little bit of fog there. Thought there might be a little bit of fog. There is fog down the coast. Ah, Luxionica, really? That is sad. That is sad. See, from farther away, you can't see it as bad as much, right? So it looks better. Looks better. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, oh, it cleared up. Yeah, down here, now we have... Okay, so Martha's Vineyard had a quarter mile visibility just an hour ago. It's early morning, right? You got that sea fog that happens in coastal areas like this, but it's it's lifting. It's lifting, so should be an easy, easy weather day for us. Easy weather day for us. Okay. So, start reading what this flight's all about, shall we? Yes, yeah, Steve. Yep. I know, right, big guy? I tried. I tried. It looked awesome this morning. It was like, man, I may not even be able to get into Martha's Vineyard, which is the next flight. But now, shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> By the way, that was all just water and meal. Now, we go for the real thing. We go for the leaded fuel I hope you have something delicious on your end to cheer because here we go girls boys here's to thank god it's Friday right thank god it's wings flight thank god we can fly the sim let's go we don't even have to thank god I'm just thankful cheers everybody let's go Oh, yeah, hold on. I'm going in for a second one. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the stuff right there. That's the stuff right there. Domino's Pizza and Cookies. Luxionica, you're set, dude. You're set. You're set. <laughs> yeah, big guy. We've talked about it. We, we couldn't come up with a good design, I think. You know? Triple seven, oh my god, dude, even on vacation, I have to take time to say it. Oh my god. Triple seven. Here, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. I hope you are cheering with maybe a pina colada, 
or if it's not a pina colada, it's a, let's see, it's a daiquiri, if it's not a daiquiri, it's a rum and coke, if it's not a rum and coke, uh, let's see, oh, so instead of a Moscow mule, if you make it with a rum, what is that called? Is that a Puerto Rican mule? Or a mojito. Or a Mai Tai. Because Triple Seven is enjoying the Caribbean sun right now. Ooh, Caipirinha Arctic. Dangerously good. Dangerously good. Just coffee. Just coffee. Okay, all right. We'll keep we'll, we'll keep it we'll keep it civil for now. We'll keep it civil for now. Bourbon makes a Kentucky mule. Kentucky mule. That's right, Sendero. That's right. I haven't had one of those, but I've heard of those. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen. The second IFR rating is a short hop from Boston Airport, KBOS, to Providence Airport, KPVD. It expands on the concept from IFR 1 and introduces VOR navigation and tech routes. Additionally, you will fly an ILS approach at KPVD to further hone your instrument approach skills. Simulator specific material. When connecting to the network, it's essential to use a valid type code. I guess they had some issues. Not really sure. What they're saying is look, a proper ICAO. What is ICAO? International Civil Aviation Organization. Look, when we started flying all over the place, everybody did, right? And planes are now taking people everywhere. Uh, we all got together as countries and said, you know what would be great is if we all kind of agreed on some rules so that uh, when we're flying in and out of each other's countries, there's some familiarity in the whole operation. So one of the things that uh, happened is we created ICAO, which is this civil group uh, that dictates rules that all these countries that have agreed to follow ICAO rules have to follow. One of them is the code for the aircraft that you're flying is always a four letter code. Um, it's actually four character because it can be a number as opposed to just a a letter so it's an alphanumeric if you will right um but always four always four digits so they're giving you some examples here right and they're also differentiating that from the call sign the call sign in the case of general aviation for example is your tail number right meaning that is what you say on the frequency you say your tail number papa tango tango foxtrot foxtrot or November 4136 Romeo. Okay. Or um, you can also be a business jet and still have a November or a Papa Tango or a, a, a Golf, whatever, general aviation registration. But now in business aviation, you start to see something else. You can tell that always the type of aircraft is always a four letter code, right? But now in business aviation, for the call sign, you start to see company names these are companies that operate business jets like for example executive jet aviation eja is executive jet that's a charter company uh, sorry a management company that's a company uh where you have a business jet great uh you don't want to have to deal with finding a hangar finding a crew keeping those guys current so you just pay eja a bunch of money they will hang your aircraft they'll find the crew they'll take care of everything you literally just tell them when you're going to show up and fly, but it's still your crew. It's always the same pilot, right? If you have a flight attendant, always the same flight attendant. So it still feels like your employees and truly they technically are, but they are working through EJA, right? So executive jet then won't use a tail number on the radio, on the frequency. Their call sign is going to be executive jet, right? Um, then you get into airlines. Airlines still have always four letter code for the aircraft. But of course, you've seen this before, I think. Um, airlines have their own airline code, right? And call sign over the frequency. So they'll say Southwest or Scandinavian or Endeavor. Uh, or some have more creative names like 
cactus. Whoa, 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 Rick Dread, let's go. Yes, five months, buddy. Five nice. Months. Really nice, nice, nice. Let's go, already? dude. Love it. Let's go. Love it. Hello, parking brake. Hello, Sion Head Plat and Cannon. <sighs> yes, exactly. Speedbird for British Airways, yeah. Um, so they're kind of giving you all those examples here, right? Brickyard, it gets so confusing. Yeah, exactly, Mort. Exactly. Blue streak, right. Right. Red nose, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there's a bunch. There's a bunch, right? But they're kind of explaining this in case you don't know. So, um... This, by the way, is another way that you can learn some IFR knowledge. It's not the easiest way. It's not structured. But once again... This is one of the ways that I I find easy, right? Is to kind of have it in sort of small little pieces like this, where they kind of just drop that little dime of information there, and then we're moving on to something else. All right, training material. In areas where many Class B and Class C airports are in close proximity, it is possible to fly IFR from one airport to another while remaining entirely in airspace that is covered by approach controllers why think about it right normally ifr you're flying from a to b airport a to airport b at some point in there you're gonna be too far from airport a and airport b to be talking to anybody in those airports certainly not ground you're in the air tower no you're not about to land or taking off approach or departure no you're too far so who are you talking to you're talking to center or control or radar they have different names in different countries but it's all sort of high level stuff en route stuff but because we're so close from boston to providence if you think about the flight look let's let's draw this out from boston to providence it's 42.8 miles right it's literally just twice the size of the class bravo airspace and if you consider there's Class Charlie airspace, there's only about, oh, I don't know. Let's see. This is 20 miles. This is 10 miles. So out of the 43, 33 miles are in controlled airspace that belongs to Boston or belongs to Providence. There's only 10 miles here that are not. You see where I'm going with this, right? I know, Arctic, it is crazy. That's what we're learning today, which is awesome. So, there are some disadvantages learning IFR in a busy area like Boston, but there are some advantages, like you learn about tech routes. That's right, Steve. That is correct, buddy. Isn't that cool? See? Ah, knowledge, man. Nothing better. Nothing better. All right. A tech route, therefore, is a route that transits approach controlled airspace only. Not exactly the case here. There's 10 miles there. That is no, nobody's airspace as far as Boston and Providence are concerned, but hang tight. Consequently, these routes offer them have maximum altitudes to prevent aircraft flying them from entering en route center airspace. So hint, hint. If all those controllers were online, we would probably never talk to center, right? We'd be talking to Boston, 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 eventually be handed off to Providence. That sort of takes that workload away from center. Center doesn't have to worry about such a short flight. And because most of the flight is inside Boston and Providence airspace anyways, it makes sense that those are the people that should be involved anyways. So let's just involve them and them only, right? In areas where tech systems exist, the FAA has published predefined preferred routes between airport pairs in the system. While many of the routes may appear to be somewhat indirect and inefficient, they are actually carefully constructed so that they do not interfere with IFR traffic flowing into and out of major airports in the area. Basically, it's like this. 
if you follow some of these tech routes you like on a map you draw them out you're gonna look at them and be like wait what nah that makes no sense man this must be a mistake no they're actually built that way because of all the other airspace and traffic that happens around them so that's why they may look weird they're not the masters of uh route picking they are the slaves right they have to fit amongst all the other more priority routes and airspaces make sense everybody with me so far hey cold how are you buddy <laughs> Luxionica, that's awesome you know what's funny dude is that you know i have this playlist on repeat it's a super awesome playlist by harris heller who is a a streamer i think i don't know um and there's like a hundred songs in the stream but you get so familiar with every one of them so quickly it's crazy but it also there's enough of them that it doesn't feel like too much of a repeat you know i look forward to listening to most of these songs like oh it's back on that's cool yeah nights this song is great so uh give me my tendies this series let me show you what they say okay if you go to the wings page here's what they say wings over new england bva that's the boston virtual artcc artcc for those of you out there that don't know what that means that means area route traffic control center basically basically it's the acronym the fa uses for a center so different areas of the country are controlled by different atc so you have boston center that controls a big area you have uh cleveland center you have jacksonville center right you have uh, uh so seattle center so you have a bunch of centers that crisscross the not crisscross the nation that have split the nation into areas um and the fa calls those artcc so this is the boston artcc but it's the virtual one because we're on vetsa so it's BVA series of self-paced challenge flights designed to teach safe operation of virtual aircraft within the online air traffic system. Basically, this I think was born from these guys trying to do a really good job as online controllers and bumping into a bunch of pilots that didn't really know how to fly online, how to fly IFR. So they said, listen, it's not their fault. These guys are not real pilots and they don't really have resources to teach them how to do this. So instead of bitching about it why don't we just fix it by offering that knowledge up i mean come on how awesome of an approach is that so here we go right it's bva's pilot training program the program helps teach members skills that can be used for online flying in vfr and ifr environments visual or instrument environments making the most of what an at-home simu flight simulator can teach you it includes structured, self-guided training lessons that do not rely directly on an instructor or mentor, allowing pilots to learn at their own pace and in a comfortable environment. Pretty awesome, right? Yeah, it is pretty awesome. I agree. Yes, yeah, Citizen is right. It's not about flying the aircraft itself, right? Not about that. It's about how to fly an aircraft that you already know how to fly so you already are a pilot you already know how to fly here's how to fly it in this environment all right cool because of the busy airspace surrounding cities such as philadelphia washington dc new york and boston there's others the entire northeast is a major tech structure Tech systems are also extensive in California. See, there it is. Through, throughout the San Francisco Bay Area and the greater Los Angeles area. In order to gain familiarity with the tech structure and further hone your IFR skills, this particular flight will take you from Boston to Providence via a tech route. Note that since tracons are often uh, covered by the overlying center controller, you may actually talk to center as opposed to just approach controllers. What they mean here is tracons are boston approach providence approach boston departure providence departure right 
if those guys are not online and Boston Center is online, the way that online ATC works, Boston Center is gonna be responsible for that airspace. So you may end up talking to Center. It's important to say this because we're ju we just talked about, hey, this route is so that you don't talk to Center. And then you talk to Center. Well, yeah, only because that may be the only person online. But if every controller possible was online, you would never be talking to Center. You'd be talking only to Boston Approach or Departure and Providence Approach. All right. However, the benefits to overall traffic flow associated with tech routes are as applicable in either case, and that makes them well worth worthy of studying the program. Basically, they're saying even online, this stuff still helps. So please learn to use them. Tech routes are available online via the preferred routes database on the FAA's website. That's right. The FAA has their own website where you can go and get these routes, right? And I already did one here. Um, you will use the database often for future flights, so it is a good idea to bookmark this link now. Hey, TJ, what's going on, man? Testimonial for Boston VAR TCC. I was just accepted to it and began reading some of the Wings literature, and it helped me figure out VFR charts and airspaces. Nice, man. Specifically, the Class B shelves and such. Really good stuff. That's awesome. Don't forget they have videos too, TJ. And hey, great to hear that. Welcome in, buddy. How you doing? Keep it moving. Gimme, you're very welcome, buddy. That's why we're here, man. We like explaining stuff. I did not, Sydney. I'm so sorry, man. Second big hello from a wet Cape Town. I'm sorry I missed your hello, buddy. Hey, wet Cape Town, really? When you don't show, there has to be a good uh, 7,000 anxious simmers. So always a treat to see you all, buddy. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Sydney. Appreciate that, bud. All right. Uh, where were we? Once on the FAA page, type BOS and PVD into the origin and destination fields, respectively. Note, you must submit the, the airport identifiers in IATA instead of ICAO. What that means is instead of KBOS, KPVD, it's just BOS and PVD. You take the K away. I, it sucks that both exist because I, I didn't read all of this. So I did this. I did KBOS because I always use ICAO. KPVD, search for tech route, submit search. No data, and I was like, what? Went back, I was like, wait, okay, maybe I should read instructions. Oh, no K, oh, all right, so Boston to PVD. Now, route type, it will tell you here. Low, high, um, drugs, no, I'm just kidding. Low, something, high something. Hmm. Actually, I don't know what all these are. And then a tech route. We're looking for a tech route, so let's go with that. And you have other stuff that you can narrow the search down for or buy, but we don't need that. So submit this search. We're going to space. <laughs> yeah, oh, March, right? Okay. Uh, there we go. Origin, destination, tech. Uh, there's only one. Altitude. Look at that. It's maxes out at 10,000. That's what this means. Okay, you can go lower, but the maximum is 10,000. I think that's what that means. And then the route string, Boston PVD, PVD. And you're like, wait, what? Why are they repeating this? Stand by. Okay. So we got this, right? You can tell this route is a tech route uh, by looking at the route type. Yep, said tech. Additionally, you can see that the maximum permissible altitude for this route is 10,000. There it is. Which makes sense. Since this tech or uh, tech routes must remain below center controlled airspace. Okay. Next, look at the actual route, which reads BOS, PVD, PVD. Low altitude, single direction. Got it. Oh, gimme. Nice job finding that, man. That was quick. Nice job, dude. I know, right, Shubashi? Exactly. I hate, I hate the use of IATA for airports because of that. Because it's the same as the VOR that often those airports will have. So, that's what's happening here. What's happening here is... The string is always going to have the origin and the destination at the beginning and end. So this is really KBOS or BOS in IATA format. 
and KPVD or PVD in either format, but this is only PVD in either format because this right here is the VOR at Providence. Providence has a VOR. It's the Providence VOR and you guessed it. Just have to find the box. There it is. It's identifier is PVD. So the route is, hey, guess what? Take off from KBOS, fly to the PVD VOR. Very simple route, right? But the FAA likes to confuse things, so they use Diata for the airport, so that's why the route says BOS, PVD, PVD. Okay. Yes, very true, 777, very true, which is another, another confusing thing. And I get, I get why both systems exist and where they came from. But man, isn't it time? Couldn't we, we, we unite, you know? Come on, man, this is a indie Formula Indy and Indy the Racing, or whatever. Remember, the split was months. for a while. Eleven months later, I am finally doing a discovery flight. Thanks to you, the what? What, David Lewis? No, you're not. Are you serious, dude? That's amazing, man. Let's go. Oh, let's go. And thank you for the sub, man. That's incredible, David Lewis. I can't stop smiling. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Nice, dude. Nice, nice, nice. You gotta tell us all about it, man. Please, 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 please. The TTX. Should I know that? I should probably know that. What is the TTX? All right. The actual route is uh, what's between those two airport codes. In this case, the route is simply PVD, the Providence VOR. So enter PVD for your route when submitting your flight plan. Okay. Low wing Cessna. Oh, is that like a new Cessna trainer? Yes. Yes, okay, I know. Yeah, thanks, Speednet. I know what you're talking about. That's cool, David Lewis. That's amazing, dude. Oh my god. Used to be the Columbia. Yes, exactly. Airbus, thank you. I knew it as the Columbia. Right, right. I forgot that Cessna bought that line of aircraft, right? And called it theirs. Uh, all right. That was a little, little desperation showing there. Little bit. Like in Wings IFR 1, expect to be assigned a Logan departure. Logan, whatever, right? Whatever. Nowadays, I think is what? Four? I can't remember. Let's go see. Logan 3. Tis the Logan 3. Which is a radar vectoring. Um, because we're not jet aircraft or non-jet aircraft, climb on assigned heading and then expect vectors, right? On, you know, onto one of those. But again, simple. Okay. Cool. Cool. Hey, Viper, how's it going, man? <laughs> Rookie. <laughs> nice. Nice, dude. All right. So here we go, guys. Uh, when receiving your IFR clears. However, instead of receiving vectors from air traffic control for the entire flight, you will be cleared direct to the Providence VOR and expected to navigate on your own, according to that instruction. It is strongly recommended that you use VOR navigation for this flight, as well as subsequent IFR ratings. While a GPS may be used to aid in situational awareness, you will get the most out of the first half of wings over New England by learning to navigate completely without the use of GPS. After IFR 11, the program introduces to newer technology, uh, including GPS and FMS navigation. Boston, you're speaking my language. You're speaking my language. I had fun flying the Junker 52 across the Swiss Austrian Alps on Wednesday. Oh, that's awesome, Viper. That's really cool, dude. Ah, such a good aircraft, huh? Totally forgot about them. Thank you, Airbus. All right. VOR frequencies are available in several places, such as sectional charts on Sky Vector. Ding, 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 ding. Sorry, that was annoying. 
And for that, I get a subscription. Just for two Let's months. go, Bard. Thank you very much, Bard. What's going on, buddy? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Uh, okay. For PVD, the frequency is 115.6. No, is it still? Yes, 115.6. Know that air traffic control will not provide this type of navigation information to you. Right, you have to know the frequencies, guys. ATC is not going to give that to you. You're expected to complete the proper flight planning ahead of time and have this information readily available during flight. The last step before flying is selecting a cruise altitude. The rules for IFR cruising altitude are similar to those for VFR flights, except that they're flown in intervals of thousands of feet. That is true. I wonder if they're updating the Wings program and VORs get decommissioned in the area so uh, it actually uses working nav aids. We'll see, Patel. We'll see what are the last VORs left. Uh, I don't think we know yet when they're turning the last, last, last ones off. Because I think, for now, they're not planning to turn everyone off. I think the more critical ones for airports are going to stay on. Is this training available to all? Yes, Steve, it is. All you gotta do is sign up. It's free. You need a VATSIM account, that's why you have to sign up. So basically, signing up here on the website is they're using the VATSIM API to link your accounts, right? So you need a VATSIM account, which is free, but you have to pass a little test, which is easy. Everybody tells me it's easy to pass. So go to VATSIM.net. Pass that test, right? Have your account come here, link the account, so sign up, and then you can start flying this. The last step before flying is selecting cruise altitude. Oh, sorry, I already read that, right? For IFR flights eastbound, fly an odd altitude. Example, 7,000, 11,000 eastbound, meaning from heading 0 to 179. From 180 to 359, we got to do even altitudes. So what are we doing today? even altitudes, right? 221, that's past 180, so, sorry, between 180 and 359, so it's even. Okay, okay. Unlike VFR cruising altitudes, uh, which only apply to altitudes above 3000, IFR cruising altitudes apply for all IFR flights, regardless of altitude above the ground. Since the route from Boston PVD is westbound, you'll need to file an even cruise altitude. Additionally, Recall that the tech route for this flight must be flown at or below 10,000. Okay. What do you do if directly north or south? Rock and Rimmer, you're never over two different headings, so the headings don't overlap. Uh, it's, it's odds 7, 11, if the heading is between 0 and 179. So true north is 0, so that would be odd. But then from 180 to 359, is even altitude so 180 is pure south so that would be an even altitude so that if a plane is flying north and one is flying south they have opposite out or even and odd altitudes different altitudes <laughs> arctic nice Ginek. that's not bad yeah 94 you're right about that you're right about that Serpico, what's going on? Keeps giving an error. Uh, Serpico, I don't know what that is, man. Guys, anybody else here have experience with logging into the Wings program? Because I never had a, a, a problem. Yeah, Rocket, no worries. Go fly. When you're ready to fly, spawn on the ground at Boston. Okay. And file your flight plan. We need to do that next. Get your IFR clearance, taxi to the runway and take off. Fly the Logan 3, departure correctly, and expect to receive a few vectors and climbing instructions as air traffic control guides you away from Boston. Once ATC clears you direct to Providence, turn your aircraft to Scorse or OBS knob until the navigation needle centers with the two front flag pointing upwards, meaning two, indicating you're flying towards the VOR. Remember that 1156 must be tuned in your navigation radio before selecting a course. We got it. In fact, you should have the VOR tuned before takeoff. Yes, of course. Once the navigation needle is centered, turn to the heading indicated. Yeah. 
Uh, so basically, they're talking about how to use a VOR here. I think we've already done that, right? Uh, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Test standards. Here we go. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is fascinating. Through Massport, that's the Massachusetts Port Authority. They take care of, like, ports and airports in Massachusetts, right? Residential sound insulation program. More than 5,500 homes and 30 schools have received soundproofing, helping to reduce the impact of noise on communities surrounding Boston Airport. Because remember that whole fight of, hey, the airport was here first, but people move in. Look, it's kind of inevitable because the city grows around the airport and people are going to move in and you can't just put industry around it, right? Uh, so what a nice sort of compromise. Listen, this is tax money, which those people that live close to the airport are paying. So let's use some of your tax money to soundproof your house then. I like it. I like that. Really nice. And that was the same thing. It was like the government picked up the bill because really you paid the government, right? Thank you, Don Miguel. Or Don Miguel. Don Miguel. Yeah, okay, cold. Is that what it is? Yeah, exactly, Dread. That's common. That's common that pilots will deviate a few extra degrees just to avoid being on that zone. I know, rookie. I know. I know. That argument will never end. Okay, test standards. Guys, for us to pass our test today, uh, connects to the network using a valid type code, A, hey, important, and an appropriate call sign for the operating operation being conducted. Okay. By the way, where do we get type codes? You guys remember? Files on appropriate IFR cruise altitude. Okay. Remembering ours has to be even, right? Between 180 and 359, even. Okay. By the way, let's pick an altitude then. So Boston is sea level, right? Uh, let's see. We got 1600 in this rectangle, 1300 in this one, and then we're in Providence. So really, not much. Uh, why don't we go... Let's go low. Why don't we go... Could we go 2000? 4000? Sure, we could definitely go 4000, but... What if we went 2,000? I wonder if we could do 2,000 IFR. I've never flown IFR that low. Let's try. Why not? Executes the assigned uh, SID. We're going to brief that next. Properly navigates to the PVD VOR when cleared directly by ATC. Okay, we'll have that tuned in. 1156. And then correctly flies the assigned ILS approach uh, into KPVD. Uh, no, cold. That uh, is not true. Look. Sorry. Sounds... It's not true. No. It's just... Look. Unlike VFR cruising altitudes, which only apply to altitudes above 3,000, IFR cruising altitudes apply for all IFR flights. So I think 2,000 is fine. And correctly flies the ILS. Okay. We should be able to do this. We should be able to do this. So. Let's do this. Let's have a look next at... This. Right? Okay, so this is a standard instrument departure for Boston, Massachusetts. It's chart 10-3 Echo. It was issued 1st October 21, effective 7 October. Very new for Logan International, K Boston, right? There's Boston departure, uh, airport elevation 19, transition out to 18,000. One, radar required, that's for ATC. Two, DME required for jet aircraft departing runways, that's not us, right? Uh, for those departures, DME required, okay. Uh, four, jet aircraft. Wait a second. Three. Blizzard, Bruno, Highland, Pats, Revs. Oh, okay. Those are... Yep, those are these here. You need DME, which we've got. Jet aircraft. Okay, don't worry about that. Uh, let's go to five. Non-RNAV equipped aircraft. That's also not us, so don't worry about that. All right. So we've read this once before, right? And we realize that basically this breaks up into initial climb for jet aircraft, initial climb non-jet aircraft. And we have a routing over here. Um, top altitude for non-jet is 3,000. That's fine because we're going to go to 2,000 today, so don't worry about it, right? 
Uh, routing. Expect radar vectors to assign route and evade or fix. So we're expecting a direct to Providence VOR, but we might get one of these here. So if we do get one of these, we need the chart to know uh, which one is going to be the radio that we get assigned to. So it's probably not going to happen, but we need to have it up just in case, right? All right. Expect vectors. Wait, they give you all the other different radios here for all the different uh, points. Okay. Very good. Uh, these are departure minimums. Uh, minimums for... Uh, climb gradients right so we don't have to worry about that uh today the weather is good but um we know that we can make this because our plane has crazy crazy performance you can actually you can go in here and see for what runway right you need what performance but i'm here to tell you our performance is going to be outstanding today okay uh let's see what else no other notes here no there's providence right there 1156 okay any questions here Hey, Captain Mahoney's here. What's going on, man? All right, guys. Now, let's get our... Uh... Whoops. There we go. Did it work? Yeah. Let's get V-Pilot up, because uh, we're going to put our flight plan in. Mm-hmm. This guy right here. And does that... Yeah, it worked. Cool. All right. So, it's IFR. We're going to go from Boston to Providence, right? Uh, alternating Boston. Departure time is going to be right at 1530. Time and routes. Well, it's 43 miles. What are we thinking? Ta-ha, <laughs> Rockin' Rumor. Thank you, buddy. 43 miles... Remember, this plane, we're going to be doing 150 knots at cruise, which we're going to get to in no time because it's 2,000 feet. So, it's 150 knots, right? Two and a half miles per minute. We have 43 miles to go. How long is that going to take us? Come on, guys. Use that brain. Use that brain. So if we're doing 150 miles per hour, nautical miles per hour, in one hour we do 150 miles. In half an hour we do 75 miles. That's half an hour. In a half of that, in a quarter of an hour, we do half of 75, 37 and a half. So it's got to be more than 15 minutes, less than half an hour. See how I do my math, my rule of thumb? And it's got to be closer to 15, right? So it's going to be like 20, 20 ish minutes. So let's put in about 22 minutes. Yeah, might be 18, might be 18. We may be vectored here and there a little extra, whatever. Actually, 22 is too much. I'm going to put 20. Okay. Fuel available. Sure. We'll have over two hours of fuel that's fine cruise speed 150 cruise altitude 2000 route pvd remarks uh we don't need this registration is papa tango Ta whoops papa tango tango foxtrot foxtrot don't need this don't need this don't need that There we go. Much better. Okay. Save that. Okay. Close this. Because we have to connect. Now, in connecting, remember, this is where we need to... Let me see. Do I have it here? I don't think so. This is where we need to have our type. Right? So I'm going to show you. V-Pilot Connect. I don't think I've done that before. 
Yeah, okay, cool. There it is. And hey, let me get the other one out of there. I see that it's covering my face. Which is a great thing. Alright, so. In here, my call sign is Papa Tango Tango Fox Strat Fox Strat. My type. So you have to know the aircraft type, right? Ah, Kilo, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. So you have to know your type. What the pilot, this software here, allows you to do is start typing the name of your aircraft. So if I start typing Turbo Arrow, look at that. You see the drop downs. See that? P28S, P28U. You're going to see that repeated. P28U, P28S. Both of those are correct. Both of those are correct. Uh, I'm going to use P28U, but both of those are correct. Okay? Don't worry about cell call. Connect. And now I got to get rid of this guy, otherwise it looks like that. All right. And now I can file my flight plan. Okay, it's filed. So now my plan is on the network. All we need to do is wait for Boston to come online and we'll be ready to go. So let's get inside. Let's get this plane ready to go. Right, so you can use vPilot as your search for aircraft type. If you don't know your aircraft type, start typing the actual name of your aircraft and chances are vPilot's going to have it for you. No, Kilo, not yet. Oh, nope. Not yet. I, no, it's not that not yet. I just totally forgot. And Wings IFR Light number two. Finally. Finally. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Whoa, bought the DC6, says Ewald. Still figuring it out hardcore. No AFE, no two tips, just a PDF checklist. Let's go, Ewald. And I love that emote, man. Love the emote. That's amazing, dude. Well done on that purchase. Glad you got it. And you're going to love that aircraft. I missed it, but is there a ref uh, about equipment codes? I saw the old codes, but then uh, the new IKO system, very confusing. So cold. In vPilot, when you go to connect, you get the connect pop-up window, right? One of the uh, fields in there is aircraft type. If you don't know your aircraft type, you can start... I just showed it here, but you can start typing the name of your aircraft. So I typed Turbo Arrow. And it will show anything it has in its database, which is the IKO database, matching those words, those two words. So it found a few Turbo Arrows. A few, why? Well, because there's a Piper one. Then there was an Embraer one. Yeah, Embraer built these things under license in Brazil. Call for KT5 tipped $15. Hope you're feeling Colonel rested, Fork. my friend. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Appreciate that very much, man. Thank you. Then it was built under license by uh, some other company somewhere. So it also lists that. So there's a few of them, but they all have the same IKO type P28U. In this case, there's also P28S. This aircraft has two IKO types. It doesn't matter. It will find the type if you start typing the actual name of the aircraft, like Airbus A330, and it will find it for you. Pretty awesome. But you have to use vPilot for that. If you lose your mouse while flying in the sim, just hit the spacebar a few times and it will reappear. Oh, interesting. Interesting. All right. It's almost time for them to connect. Let's get this aircraft ready to go. Okie dokies. Okie dokies. Uh, we got old school equipment today, as you can tell, right? We're only going to use VOR. Only going to use VOR. Hmm. Hey, that's better. Wait a second. Ah, 7.7 .7 is not bad. Something's going on here, but I can't read it. Is there a way to clean that? I think it's two different messages, right? Overlapping.
Hey, Dread, you gotta go, man. Okay. Offline for about three weeks. Whoa, for aviation events. Work, moving to Utah. Whoa, my God, dude. Moving to Utah, that's amazing, man. Hey, you too, buddy. Be good. Good luck with all that. Please check in once in a while. Let us know you're okay, and uh, we hope to see you on the other side, buddy. Take care. <laughs> Cobra. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate the uh, the faith there. Ask you, I'm having my first taste in an arrow soon. My birthday present after it was noticed. I was playing a lot of MSFS. That's amazing. Hey. Wow. Ask you. I got a... I don't even know who it is, but whoever noticed, well on them. Well on them. For some reason, the autopilot on this plane is acting up for me. Maybe conflict with another mod. Ooh, yeah, it just turns hard into any direction. Keeps turning. Yeah, well, let's see what happens today. We'll try and use it. Try and use it. All right, guys. Time to get that checklist out, right? Pre-flight interior. We're going to start here. Parking brake is set. Uh, gear is down. Selector is down. Avionics. Are they off? Off. This one isn't. No, this one isn't. This one isn't. This one isn't. This one isn't. And this one isn't. And this one isn't. Okay, yeah, they're off. <laughs> Mixture is lean. Yep. Magnetos are... Uh, I don't know why it always loads with magnetos on. Battery switch on, and we're going to actually keep it on this time. Fuel quantity... Uh, we need a little more fuel than this. I got uh, 30. Actually, you know what? That's going to give me about two, uh, two and a half hours, so I'm okay with that. Okay with that. So that's fine. Annunciator panel check. There it is. All five lights. Okay. Battery switch is going to stay on. Flight controls. Okay. Up and down. Up and down. And all around. Okay. Very good. I already saw the fuel is open to the right, which is the higher one. Flaps check. Okay, we got flaps 0, 10, 25, 40, 25, 10, 0. Okay. Both sides, yep. Yeah. Elevator trim is neutral. All right. Before engine start, circuit breakers, all in, alternate air, off, prop RPM is max, and fuel selector fullest tank is on the right. Next is engine start, but for this we're going to be talking to Boston first, so let's wait for them to log on. Hey, not bad guys, I'm actually ready to go with one and a half minutes, what? What is happening? What alternate reality is this? What alternate reality is this? Tell me. Fake news, says Cobra, I know. It has to be. It just has to be. Right? It has to be. Alright, how about we dial in 1156 here. Uh, and I'm gonna guess it's gonna be... What was it? 220-something, wasn't it? It was 220-something. So let's get it around there, and we'll fine-tune in the air. Because we're also not sure where they're going to vector us to, right? It's because of the haircut, more aerodynamic. Look at that. The smooth lines of the haircut. I did see this. I guess what is missing is my knowledge of what avionics supports uh, features for each code. What do you mean, cold? Hold on a second. You guys, citizens, a PDF and stream next to equipment codes. This one is from the FAA, okay? What, so, okay. Ah, 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 okay, 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 okay. Equipment codes, sorry, sorry, cold. I was talking aircraft codes. You were asking equipment codes, buddy. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, sorry. I totally misunderstood that. Okay. I mean, good that I talked about aircraft codes, because that still deserves to be talked about. But, citizen, thank you very much. Yes, there is. So, the problem, the problem. With equipment, equipment codes. Logan Airport Aid of Information Alpha. Holy cannoli are these guys on time. Seriously? Visibility one zero. Seriously? Your cloud net four thousand five hundred. Seriously. Temperature two one. Impressive. Two point one two. Impressive. Three zero one eight. Their site says. Approaches are being conducted to parallel runways. 
1430, and they go 1430. Boom. What? Departing runway niner. What? Runway 33 right is approved for turn off after landing. All aircraft reach my call hold short instructions and to find altitude. Moderate bird activity in all areas. Numerous construction cranes in the Boston area and in the vicinity of Logan Airport. What's funny is this? What's Advice funny on is this? Contact. You have information alpha. What's funny is this? Boston Logan Airport data information. What are alpha. the chances I would have One, Boston three, five, Adis four, zero. tuned in, right? One, zero, Plus it's three, off. Zero, and eight. Shouldn't be receiving. Visibility 10. In this sim, it doesn't really work. So let's write it down. Temperature 2.1. 2 .2. Altimeter 3018. 3018. Approaches are being conducted to parallel runways. ILF runway 4 right approach and visual approach That's to runway approaches. 4 left in use. Departing runway 9 -er. Runway 33 right is approved for turn off after landing. Departing All aircraft runway read my call hold short instructions and assigned altitude. Moderate bird activity in all areas. Numerous no, construction cranes in the Boston area and in the vicinity <laughs> of Logan really funny, Airport. That's really funny, dude. It took me a second, Advise but that's really on funny. initial contact. You have information alpha. Alpha, okay. Let's get it one more time. Boston Logan Airport aid of information alpha. 1354 Zulu. 1030 and 8. Visibility 10. Your clouds at 4,500. Temperature 2-1. 2.12. Altimeter 3018. Approaches okay, are nice. being conducted to parallel runways. I so let's tune in 1347, or better yet, yeah, tune away from this. Use. Departing runway 9 -er. Runway 33 right is approved for turn off. At there we go. And this one is going to go to uh, 1347 is our Boston Center. JetBlue 1139, clear to the Boston Logan International Airport via direct Ponset, then the JFUN 2 arrival. JetBlue 1139, read back, correct. All right, let's make the call. JetBlue 1139, A-Fern, you can expect the ILS-4 uh, right approach at Boston. Cobra, that's a Brazilian right. tail number. Brazil tail numbers start with Papa Tango. Boston Center, a very good morning. Papa Tango, Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot with information Alpha, is looking for IFR to Providence, also Wings Flight number 2. Hello, Evan. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot Boston Center. Good morning to you, sir. Clear to the Providence Logan Air correct, correction. Pro clear to Providence Airport via the Logan 2 departure. Radar vectors Providence as filed. Maintain 2000. Departure this frequency in squawk 4612. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot is cleared IFR to Providence via the Logan uh, confirmed Logan 3 departure then Raider Vectors and Providence VOR departure frequency is going to be this same frequency climb and maintain 2000 the squawking 4612 Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot you are correct it is the Logan 3 departure thank you your readback is correct advise ready to taxi runway 4 left information else is current or left, okay. And we have information alpha. It's going to be runway four left. We'll call ready for taxi. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot. There we go. Hey, Joe, what's going on, buddy? 4612 is in. Perfect. Put it on standby. Frequency of departure is the same. We don't have an altitude selector, so I don't have to set that 2000. That's it. It's now time to get the engine started and get going. Let's do this, guys. All right. Thro throttle is half travel. Sure, let's go half travel. Battery switch is already on. Alternator, not on yet. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Ba beacon. Wait a second. Wait a second. What? Yes. We don't need landing light. We don't need pitot heat. Jeez. Beacon is on. Navigation lights are on. Indeed. With those lights, those are. Pump is going to go to low. Was in high. Not sure why. Mixture rich. Until fuel flow peaks. There's fuel flow. 
Boom. I hear it. And... Okay. Clear prop. Look left, look right. Engage the starter. And as soon as it catches, we're going to feed it that fuel. There we go. All right. Keep that engine at 1500 RPMs, but first check that oil pressure. It's there. Nice. Nice. There's 1500. She's coming back down. Mixture. Yep. So we did all this. Okay. Completed this. Next is taxiing. We're going to wait until, until the engine is nice and warm. Door is already closed there. Let's latch the top. Okay. Good there. I don't need this anymore. Engine over boosted, it says now. Now it's only one message. Okay. How are we doing? 1400. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. It's going to be next is taxi. Let me check chat real quick here. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know, right? Hopefully, Ninja. I know, I agree. I don't know. I don't know, Neville. Sounds like she's speeding up. Yeah, 1500. I'm gonna close this. Whoops. Alright. Because look, my oil temperature is already coming up. It's And we have a, a bit of a long taxi. So, let's get our taxi chart ready. Let's put a flight in here so we have charts ready to go. Should probably have done that, right? There it is. Okay. There we go. Alright, so. We're at General Aviation, and we know, because we've flown in and out of Boston before, where that is, right? We're gonna depart out of four left. There's a... Uh, let's see. Four left right here. So, it's probably going to be Bravo all the way down to Echo or something like that. Maybe an intersection departure from up here, but probably not. So, should be a fairly straightforward taxi. Okay. I should have started my chronometer with the engine start, so I'm going to start it now. Okay. Ah, tubes. That's Navigraph. Yeah. No, did not set the altimeter. Thank you, guys. Jesus. Woo! 3018. Yep. Don't know if I would have caught that during my little scan here on taxi, but my, might be able to. Exactly, Skipper. Now, I know airport altitude was 19. This is not 19, but... That's what that sim is working on, and it's close enough. Within 100 feet, I'm usually okay. Already cleared to Detroit via the Highland 5 departure, then as filed. Climb via state departure is with U34.7 and squawk 4717 Delta 1478. The 1478 read back, correct, advise, ready to push. Advise, you and your ready to push, Delta 1478, thank you. Boston Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot. Foxtrot is at General Aviation and ready for taxi. And Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot. Foxtrot, would you like any intersection departures on four left or would you like full length? Uh, we are uh, acceptable with Charlie. How about that? Acceptable. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot. Foxtrot, no problem. I'm with four left at Charlie. Taxi via Bravo, Charlie. Taxi via Bravo, Charlie, for a Charlie intersection, departure for four left. Papa, take a, take a fox trot, fox trot. Jeez, talk about non-standard phraseology there. But at least I made myself understood. Okay, so here we go. Our taxi checklist is landing light coming on. Avionics. Well, we had the radios on. Let's turn the rest on now. There we go. Radios are set, 1156, so we got the only frequency we need today in COM1. Altimeter setting check, heading indicator is south as it was with the magnetic compass. Taxi area was clear. Okay. 
Parking brakes released, test the brakes, and then flight instrumentation on the go. Let's do it. Okay. All right, off we go. Off we go. Call for taxi, runway niner. So that's going to be Bravo up there. So let's go that way. All right, so turn and bank. Look, showing a left turn and ball on the outside. Let's see what happens on the right turn. Yep. Magnetic compass is swinging and still matches the magnetic compass. So that's looking good. Clear left. Clear right. Okay, airspeed is indicating close to zero as it should be. I think if I actually uh, stop here, it does show. Yeah. Interesting. It's very sensitive. Jet it shows like even below 10 knots. But it does look like it's right working. Vacuum pump looks eight. good too. Attitude is erect and indicating uh, wings uh, level. Uh, Altimeter is set and within 100 feet of the airfield. No, let's go, buddy. Thank you very much for that, man. I appreciate it. Wow, 11 months, buddy. Amazing. Look at that wind. That's going to help us, huh? All right. Uh, my vertical speed is showing zero. And we've already tested these guys. So that's looking good, too. Okay. So that's all completed. Ground check. We're going to wait and do the ground check when we get to uh, Charlie. Because we're at intersection, right? So intersection departure, guys. So instead of departing from the very beginning of the runway here, we're going to depart from Charlie. Okay? We still have plenty of runway available to us. We are a small aircraft. We don't need all of this. And because we're departing from Charlie and that's not common, that means I have time. I'm not going to be... Like, if I wait until I get there to do my, my engine check, I'm not going to be clogging up the beginning of the runway where most people departing the runway, especially the airliners here in Boston, are going to be using. That's not a place to do a ground check, right? You don't see airliners hanging out here doing engine checks. Those guys, by the time they get here, they're ready to go. So if you're going to use one of those intersections at a busy airport like this, try to be ready to go too, if you can. How? Well, you could do your ground check on the roll. Like during taxi, nothing stops you. You've seen me do it a thousand times here in this channel. But today, because we are going to be at an intersection where I think that we're not going to be holding anyone up, I'm going to wait until we get there because I can dedicate more time, more attention to the engine check than I can during taxi. If I do my engine check during taxi, not only I have to look out for what's happening with the engine, but I also have, I'm taxiing, I have to keep looking around, right? Maintain my situation awareness. Not as, not as ideal. Well, not ideal, I should just say. Just not ideal. All right. Coming up to Charlie here on the left. Harrison Fort with the part on Charlie, says Shubashi. <laughs> ah, Shubashi, that's really funny, man. How's it going, buddy? Could you have just done the engine checks before pushing back? Yes. Yes, I could have. Yes, I could have. Yes, this is the standard scenery hammer. But I do have Rex textures for the ground, and I do have the um, add-on that adds all the correct taxiway signs. By the way, I'm going to turn here, guys, to align myself with the wind. Because you always... Hold well, on, wind was 0, 3, 0. If you can, you always want to be aligned as much as possible with the wind to do your engine checks. So that there's no side loads on the propeller. All right, let's do our ground checks real quick. Parking brake is set. Mixture is rich. Prop is max RPM. All right. Hold on, I don't need the fuel pump for this. Throttle set, 2,000. I would say that's pretty close. Someone else doing their engine check. Let's do mag checks. So, left mag. To watch that drop. Does anyone know if there's a way to increase sensitivity of the mouse wheel for zoom? I don't think so, Steve. 
Hundred and yeah, look too much. Remember, we've been having this problem with this engine. I'm gonna go straight to the right because it's gonna do the same thing. Yep. For some reason, um, the spark plugs fall up a lot on this aircraft. Whoops. And um, I can't clean them up. So, it's not a good mag check, but we're gonna consider it done. Vacuum gauge. Yep. Looking weak, but good. Oil pressure and temperature, both good. Air meter should be about 30, 40. Yeah, good. Annunciators. Let's test them all. There we go, all five. Propeller, we're gonna exercise it three times. Jet Blue 197, confirm squawk mode, Charlie. That's once, let it come back up. Oh, JK, it's awesome, dude. It's an awesome aircraft. Okay, second time. Skip the 197, no problem. Runway Niner, taxi by Alpha. Well, yeah, Kilo, Skipper, Mike, but they Bolt, I don't think that holding it at a thousand should do that that quickly with an engine like this, you know? What's that, Ninja? Oh, what well, Vosper was say? Fast departure, I was passed for Lufthansa 74, they rolled onto the runway from taxi. No stopping to align before full takeoff. That's actually common. That's very common with airlines. All right. Propeller is exercised. Alternate air is off. Ox boost pump is off. Fuel pressure looks great. Whoops. Engine idle check. Care 88 to the Seneca. Steve, it's way more Center complex than the Seneca. Airport. The simulation Alpha here goes much departure. deeper Ray than the Seneca. So... It's just as pleasurable, whoops, it's just as pleasurable, but more pleasurable because for me, I can go deeper. I can, you know, all the circuit breakers here work, for example, right? Um, the battery actually drains. You know, it's a, uh, there we go, 700 is my, my idol. I'll take it. So before takeoff, I need to do this too, because I need to be ready for takeoff, right? So battery switch is on, yes. Alternator on, yes. Strobe lights are on, yes. Landing light on, yes. Ox boost pump, I don't know why it says off. I'm gonna take off with it in high, actually. Fuel selector fullest tank is still the right, yep. Engine gauge is checked, temperature is good, pressure is good. Mixture is rich, prop is full forward, flaps zero. Hey, thank you very much, DC. I missed you today, dude. Thank you, 400 bits, man, thank you very much. I was like, where's DC today, man? He's not talking. How you doing, man? You doing all right? Trims. So we got neutral there and neutral there. Cabin door closed. Oh, it's not latched. Look. Woo! Latched. All right, now we're ready for takeoff. Boston Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot is holding short runway four left at Charlie, ready for departure. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot, turn Remember, left climate heading 280, wind 080, 080 at 8, runway four left at Charlie, clear for takeoff. And turn left heading 280 at Charlie, clear for takeoff for runway four left. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot. All right, yeah, we already got a heading. Let's go. Strobes are on. Laning light is on. Uh, transponder is in out. We're good. Our timer is going too. That's it. Just roll on and go. So I'm going to do the same thing Lufthansa did, okay? Here we go, Ninja. Here we go, Vosper. Just check the final. It was cleared. There we go. Rolling in. Rolling that power in. And we're going full power which is 42 inches, airspeed is alive, engine gauge is good, 65, 70, let's go flying. Okay, there we go, we got plenty of runway, so I'm keeping the gear down for now. Needing quite a bit of right rudder, but that's normal in an aircraft like this. And gear up. We have no flaps, JP, one second, buddy, I'll get to it. I'm gonna initially climb out at 90 like this, and let's go heading 280. And we're climbing to 2000. 
So I'm going to turn on my autopilot for heading. And it is. So there we go. I already have 280 dialed in. Almost fine tuned. Now it's fine tuned. 1000 for two. I'm going to bring my power back now on the climb. I'm going to bring it back to 33. Bring my RPM back to 25. Okay, I thought that we could cross over here. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna do my climb checklist. Landing gear is up. Flaps are up. Airspeed is good. Mixture rich. Prop speed 2575. I'm going with 25. Manifold pressure is good. 33. Airspeed is required. Pump off. Landing light stays on. Trim is set for now. 1700 for 2000. Foxtrot, Foxtrot, radar contact, the altitude. Passing 1700. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Thank you. All right, so he's, he's got us on the radar because we're now way enough from the ground that he's got us on the radar. We got to level off at 2000. Sorry, guys, a bit busy. Hard to read chat right now. David, what's that? The Arrow 3 better than the Arrow 4? Nah. I like the T-tail. I like the T-tail. All right, leveling off at two. Man, look at this. Look at this wing that makes me not be able to see downtown. Downtown Boston. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, what a departure. Left heading 230. Papa Tango Tango Fox Truck Fox Truck. Okay, we're already on heading. Left 230. Papa Tango Tango Fox Truck Fox Truck. For the MVA, are you able to climb up to 3000? That's affirmative. Papa Tango Fox Truck Fox Truck. Papa Tango Tango Fox Truck Fox Truck. Thank you. Turn left heading 230. Climbing take 3000. And left uh, 230. Climbing maintain 3000. Papa Tango Tango Fox Truck Fox Truck. Okay, so I didn't understand exactly what it is he said. Because of the blah, 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 can you do 3,000? Don't know what he meant. But, look, he almost has me on a heading for Providence. Providence right now is right there. Whoops. Climb, baby. Climb, baby. Yeah, minimum vectoring out to it. It may be, bus. It may be. Thank you. I didn't understand what he said, but thank you. Ah, oh, look at that. What a departure. What a departure. Oh my god, DC. <laughs> that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Agent is doing well. GNAC, it looks amazing, man. Look at that. What is this here, guys? Are those houses? That looks like, like a cool waterfront. Everything kind of parallel there. 200 to go. Got to stay very, very aware of what's happening in a busy airspace like this. Leveling off at three. Back Bay, mostly apartments. Okay. Must be expensive because what a cool place that looks like it is. I don't know. looks like a cool sort of waterfronty place. Hey. Ah, okay, no worries. Respond the moment ago. Okay, no worries. Fly runway heading. Wind calm, runway one fifth takeoff. Buzz! Thank you very much for that, dude. Cabot, please go four two seven. Thank you very much, man. Three months. The underscore buzz. Cobra. Jesus. Jesus. All right, guys. What's the outside air temperature? Thirteen, and we're at three thousand, right? Thirteen at three thousand. About there. Yeah, look, 143 or so is our ground speed right now. Not too bad. We thought it was going to be 150. Not too bad, not too bad. Beautiful Tango, views. Tango, Tango, Fox, oh. Fox, 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 direct Providence VOR. Direct Providence VOR. Papa Tango, Tango, Fox, 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 Fox. All right, let's do this. So now... Because I already have it dialed in, all I need to do is center it and then go, hey, let's go nav. Let's go nav. What's my DME to it? 35 and a half. Okay, cool. Whoops, watch that altitude. 
There we go. No, Rio. No, I'm leveled at three. I'm leveled at three. In the turn, I don't have an autopilot mode to maintain my altitude. My autopilot only does lateral stuff. Left and right. It doesn't do up and down. So up and down is on my trim here. So I got a trim, right? But when I turn, if I don't trim during the turn, it drops the nose. I think that's what you saw. Ah, okay. And the tag flips from, the, uh, from to then from. While on from, are my right and left reversed following the needle? Not if the needle is still pointing up. If if you got the Delta white, if you got the white uh, little arrowhead here, right, pointing back, meaning from, but the yellow arrow is still pointing up where you're flying to, then you have correct sensing, if that makes sense. All right. Let's get a quick cruise checklist out of the way here. Cruise climb. Yeah, listen, we've already done all of this, right? So cruise max of 75%. Actually, we're a little bit above that, aren't we? No, still in the 75. Okay. Propeller RPM. We're going to keep it at 25 because we're going to land soon. Make sure lean. We're not going to lean it here. Okay. Elevator trim is set. Of course, pump is going to stay off. Fuel tank selector is going to stay on the right for now. It's still about three gallons higher than the right. For descent, it's going to be power, mixture, elevator trim, and altimeters. The only thing we really need from that is altimeters, right? The Providence altimeter. And now we're in and we've taken off. Liz, yes, sir. It's because I want to do two flights, maybe even three today. We'll see his. Let me see something here. Would you think it is yes? I did his. Thank you very much for that, buddy. Thank you. Really a great saying that I heard and I liked. <laughs> yes, mucho take it easy. <laughs> Room ruffian, uh, I think so. Thank you. Okay, try that, buddy. If it doesn't make sense, let me know. I do it every half hour, David Lewis. Some people do it half, every half hour. Some people do it every hour. Some people do it every 45. It depends on you, right? On a short flight like this, remember the flight is 20 minutes, I'm not going to switch tanks, so I don't worry about it. In longer flights, I'll set a timer for half an hour. I've done it every hour. I think it's better to do every half an hour. Guys, Providence Aetis is up. 124 decimal 2. Let's tune that in. 124 decimal 2. Temperature 2-0. There we go. 2.13. Altimeter 3017. Ooh, 3017. ILS runway 5 approach in view. Surface radar in view. Transponder use is required on all taxiways and runways. Notice two airmen north and two airmen. Hazardous weather for the Providence area available on flight certification frequencies or ATC upon request. Refrain for runway assignment. Advise on initial contact you have information call. Golf. On initial contact, you have information call. Golf. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot contact Providence Approach 123.67. Have a good day. Providence Approach 123.67. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot. Okay, real quick, let's get this uh, ADIS in. Your clouds at 8,000. Your clouds at 25,000. In the meantime, I'll dial down. Temperature 20. 2.13. Altimeter 301. Uh oh. What happened? It just went offline. It just went offline. 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 5. There we go. Providence approach. Uh, good morning. Papa Tango. Tango Foxtrot. Foxtrot. Pop Tango, Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Providence, Approach, Providence, Altimeter 3017, fly heading 230, Vectors ILS, runway 5, Approach, verify out. Fly heading 230, uh, Vectors, runway 5, Approach, and we're currently leveled at 3000. Pop Tango, Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Okay, Air back Tango, to Tango, heading Foxtrot, 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 Foxtrot. There we go. 
Uh, so that ATIS uh, stopped working for us for some reason. Let's uh, try that again. Nothing. Okay. I'm going to double click on it and see it in VPilot. Okay, so... Wind 040 at 8, so runway 5 makes sense. Visibility 10 miles, few clouds at 5,000. Yep. Airport or yep. Gap there it is. Information Gulf 1351 Zulu. Wind 040 at 8. Visibility 10. Your clouds at 5,000. Your clouds at 8,000. Your clouds at 25,000. Temperature 20. 2.13. Altimeter 3017. Okay, perfect. ILF runway 5 approach in use. Surface radar in use. Okay, cool. Alright, so it's gonna be runway 5. Alright, runway 5 is the major runway here. Uh, we're gonna land and clear to the left, right? So. Let's look at that ILS runway 5. Okay, so ILS localized runway 5 for Providence, Rhode Island. Um, this is chart 11 1 for 9 February 18, Green State Airport. Or sorry, Green State is the county um, or the name of the airport. No, the name of the airport. KPVD, sorry, name of the airport. Okay, altimeter setting in interest, transition level flight level 180, transition altitude 18,000, pilot controlled lighting 120.7. Okay, uh, we're going to be vectored for ILS runway 5, so at some point we're going to intercept the localizer here, which is 047, 109.3, we're going to have to dial this up. So let's put this in, 109.3, we're going to put it in nav 2 for now, so we don't forget, whoops, and then we can transpose it over into nav 1, 109.3, there we go. Okay. Oh, and 047, so I'll put that in here too so we don't forget. Whoops. 047. Okay. All right. Um, looks like glide slope intercept normally happens at 2000 at Cutsy. It's a three degree slope down. Providence Airport information hotels minimum. now current wind 0408, altimeter 3018. 3018, let's adjust. 018 and oh, this is it really off. I didn't adjust this the first time. 30188. Okay. Sorry, chat, a little bit busy. Bon dia, Vulcan. Hey, buddy. Uh, serendipity, I love the arrow. It's fantastic. Sorry, guys, I missed those mentions. Okay. Oh, by the way, look. We're at 15 miles, right? So we're getting close. We're getting close. It's off to the left here somewhere. Oh, I think it's over there. Look at the lights. Uh, so they're probably going to vector us either west or east of the airport to go on to runway 5. So we got a little bit of time, but we still have to finish the briefing, right? So let's go. All right, minimum is 253, which is 200 feet above. Uh, RVR 18 or 1800, but we got this, right? It's... The visibility today is not the problem. Okay, missed approach is climb to 800, then left turn to 2500 on a 270 heading, and outbound on the Providence VOR radio 321. So when we put the ILS into NAV1, we need to remember to put the VOR into NAV2, so that if we go around, this is already set up, not only the VOR frequency, but the 321 radio. Right? As a matter of fact, look, because I'm no longer navigating to that VOR, I can probably already put... Let's do that, right? Let's already put that here. And we'll put 115.6 here. So I've swapped them around. The initial member course is locked over here, so I don't have to look back at the charts. So it was 047. About there. And in here, now, I'm going to put that go around radio of the 321 okay 321 there we go so that's already set in case we have to go missed and yeah it looks like we're transitioning onto the east side or sorry the western side of the airport to then get vectored in 
Beautiful day out here. Beautiful day. Okay, anything else in here? And then hold Ed Fosty. Uh, what kind of entry is this going to be, Chad? What kind of entry into the hold? Then not being on the fly. What do you mean, cold? How's the winds? Wind zero four is uh, zero four zero at eight. Ciao, Il Moris. It's fairly quiet right now, so you shouldn't have a problem at either location. You just won't get to hear uh, Fabio since he's on a different frequency at PVD than you would be on uh, at Nantucket. Uh, Left heading 220, Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot. There we go. 220, watch that altitude. She wants to dip during a turn, don't let her. My home airport. Oh, no way. Quonset, we flew there in one of the uh, VFR lessons. Steve, that's awesome. P Delta, yeah, it looks like it. Looks like it's a left circuit to I think we're here right or there now I can't tell now I need the chart again situation awareness guys always good to know okay so look at the land here look at the islands right look at the inlets try to figure out where the airport is so it's yeah look that's the big inlet so the airport is indeed right here so yes this is a left circuit for runway five. So we're on a left downwind for runway five, which is over there. That over there, what is that? Well, let's have a look. That over there is gonna be North Kingston. Oh no, it's Newport State maybe? Or North Kingston, North Kingstown, North Kingstown. It's North Kingstown. And then over there would be Newport State somewhere in that island, on that island. Ah, controller giving her frequency, you didn't brief, and then you try to click the knob in, uh, bouncing sim. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha, cold. Yeah. Setting things up ahead of time, man. If you have time to do it, oh my god, makes all the difference, guys, all the difference. So, we are on approach, right? So let's get that done. Alright, so we got this, we got this, we got this, and altimeter setting, we just put in that last one. So approach, landing light is on. Fuel selector is going to stay on the right. We're going to land on the right. Ox boost pump. Let's turn that on to high. Whoops. There we go. Mixture rich. Prop max RPM. Hmm. I might as well. The noise is going to be a little annoying, but I might as well so I don't forget. Parking brake is released. Gear selector not yet and flaps not yet. Those are the last two. There's the crossing runway, with the runway and identifier lights blinking. DC says, here's something that should terrify everyone. I'm going to be a pole worker in November. <laughs> nice, DC. That's awesome, dude. The nearest is select the tower frequency without turning it. Oh, cold. That's amazing. Is that on the GTN? Every month I see that being ignored. Month after month. Disappointing. Vet Sim Osobo. What's that, Skipper? Hold on. Something Calypso. I wish I had Vet Sim flight ID tags like XP. Oh, by the way, ILS just picked up because we swung on the other side of the, uh, the other side of the uh, localizer. Because we just passed, yeah, the runway threshold, basically. So wait, so XP will show your Vet Sim ID where? Vulcan Rider, I tend to gravitate to streamers who play the games related to their real life jobs. Like you. Oh, thanks. Subreef. Playing cold waters, being a retired submarine sonar man. Oh, and trucking cowboy, being a retired trucker and playing America. That's awesome, Vulcan. I appreciate that, buddy. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. By the way, why is my ETA non existent in Fly Live? Not sure. Also, also, let's start. The voting. Hold on a second. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. All 
Alright guys, check this out. Let me see if this works. Let me see if this works. Okay, I guess the body is working, so... There we go. Check the bot. Check the bot on chat, let's go. Predict butter. Predict butter. Alright, pretty soon we're gonna get a vector here, guys. Look. The airport's getting behind us. We're still above the glide slope, so not yet, right? Not yet. If we're gonna stay at 3,000, he's gonna get, he's gonna have us go further out. We could have a look at Volanta. No, by the way, 4 next. Sorry, buddy. It's gotta be between 0 and minus 1,000. pretty cool look at the route we've done so far in green right versus the direct line and now we're being vectored for that ILS right the flashing green is because we have providence that every time I mouse over it it shows up And you see why? Left heading 130, descent to maintain 2000. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Alright, so left heading 130, which is 90 degrees from where we were. And descent to maintain 2000. So down we go. start slow in here there's no no reason to go too fast and going too fast screws up his vectoring too because he's expecting me to go a certain speed you know he's not expecting me to all of a sudden be doing 200 knots you know i can but it's not nice thanks cold i'm trying man not hand flying the the turning is the plane i'm just doing the pitch i'm just doing the pitch hey fspb how's it going man how are you, sir? Lots of trees around here. Look at that. All right, leveling off at 2,000. Arrow, Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, five miles from Cudsey, turn left, heading 080, maintain 2,000, still established on the localizer, cleared ILS, runway five, approach. Left heading 080, maintain 2000, cleared ILS runway 5 approach. Papa Tango Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Alright, 2000 until established. 080 on the heading. And we're clear to intercept. At 2000, I'm still doing my trim here in speed, so pardon me with the crappy altitude holding here. Alright, so there's the runway up there. So I still have a little bit before I intercept, but it's coming up. There's 2000. I'm gonna start slowing down now. Actually, not not yet. I'm still kind of far. I'm not gonna slow down too much just yet. All right. I am gonna arm the approach because I have a localizer here, right? Look, there's localizer normal and localizer reverse. So I'm gonna localize her normal, and she's gonna start turning when you accept that localizer. I have to maintain 2,000.
But I was saying, I didn't want to go to prop RPM max that early because it's this whole time you have to deal with the noise of the engine. And as you can tell, it's a lot of noise. Okay, coming up on localizer, glide slope is alive. Slowing down below 128 to drop the gear. I think it's 128 in this aircraft. 133, okay, good. Stay at 2000, careful there. On the localizer, I can see the runway down there. One dot below the glide, I'm gonna put my gear down. Yes, that is for sure, Skipper. That is for sure. Not on the glide just yet. I'm gonna go one notch of flaps. Perfect alignment there for the localizer. And there's the glide slope. So I'm going to start Fox, descending. Fox, Fox, wind zero five, zero, correction, wind zero, four, zero, eight, eight, runway five, clear to land. Clear to land, runway zero five. How about Tango, Tango, Fox, Shot, Fox, Shot? Arrow, Tango, Fox, Shot, Fox, Shot, then a long landing is approved to turn off at the end for the short taxi. And long landing approved for the turn off at the end, short taxi. Papa Tango, Tango, Fox, Shot, Fox, Shot appreciates it. All right, here we go, guys. On the glide, on the localizer. On speed, about 110 is what I like for approaching this aircraft, so that's working pretty well. Pretty well, pretty well. By the way, sorry, Dens Migori, buen dia! What's going on, man? What is going on? On our way down. Look at this. Hands off. I mean, localizers on autopilot, but the, the glide's working pretty okay. Pretty okay. I know, David Lewis. Oh my god, dude. I want that so bad. I want that so bad. Hey, Desmigotti. It's good to see you, too. It's good to see you, too. Okay, guys. Let's do our last checklist here. Landing checklist, we got the gear, we got the flaps. Flaps set and checked. Final approach speed, we're doing 110 until very close. Touchdown, mains first, landing row, of course, and braking, minimum, okay, got it. Load up the after landing, leave it there. How are we doing? Look at this. Hands off this whole time. Not bad, not bad. It's slightly below, slightly below, but again, visually, I'm okay, right? So, I'm all right. Uh, getting a little bit lower than I would like. Whoa, got a big bump over the water there. We're coming on shore. All right, I'm going to turn off that autopilot. There we go. And remember, we're doing the long landing, right? So now I'm shallowing out. Shallowing out. So I'm no longer aiming here, but that doesn't mean don't aim anywhere. I'm aiming to land at that uh, taxiway, the next taxiway that crosses there. You have to have a new aim point. Not having an aim point, by the way, good check on the on the um, wind there. You have to have an aim point. Without an aim point, things can get sloppy. All right, let's see. Let's see what we get. 
And I'm only flap stand here, so we're gonna go flap stand and see what we get at flap stand for landing. Now the runway is gonna move up. There we go. Minus 77. Hey, no words! Dude, you guessed exactly minus 77. Nice! Nice! Okay, moving flaps up. Arrow Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, turn left when able and taxi to the ramp via Mike and Alpha. Congratulations on passing IFR number two. Good morning. And when able left per Mike and Alpha. Uh, and thank you very much. Uh, great job. It was a pleasure. And uh, if you're sticking around, we're going to go ahead and do IFR flight number three. Thank you very much. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot. I will be around for a while and that one will be approved. Roger that. Talk to you in a bit. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot. Okay, it's Mike and Alpha. Because the ramp is at the end here that we park at, right? We're going to keep everything on. So landing light stays on. Transponder stays on. Strobe stay on. Joe, that was impressive, impressive man. Exactly minus 77. Ah, Stewie, thank you, buddy. And I still missed the exit, DC. You got it. Well, to be honest, when he said clear at the end, I thought I had to clear at this last one. So I took some time bringing up the chart that you guys couldn't see while I did that, right? And I was checking, and at the same time he said Mike and Alpha, so not making excuses, just explaining. Yes, that's right, Skipper. Thanks, DC. I deserve it. I deserve it. I deserve it. Alright, so... Unlatch. Open. I think if I add a little bit of power, my door closes. Right? So I'm trying to get to a thousand. Will it close? Oh, it didn't close. Okay, good. There we go. Shut the electrical off. Oh, it's not the volume. Jeez. I forgot. Interesting, that was working? Hmm. Okay, that's all good. Okay, turn these two off. Alright, cool. Alright, guys! Hey, hey! IFR number two done. Done! Nice. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Oh, no way, Vulcan. Really? Well, is it too late to finish it? Callie, which 172 do you have? The glance down on final was the thing that worried me. I have a bad habit of checking where I'm parking on that chart while 20 feet above the runway. Yeah, not good. Cold. That's the one thing I forgot, is to brief where I was going to clear before I landed, right? Ibanez says, I often find that when I come off of autopilot on ILS approach, that my trim is quite high. Is that because I'm too slow and not enough power, so AP has increased AOA? That could be, Ibanez, yes, could be. Could be. Look, Volante is like, hey, do you want to review our flight? Sure, there it is. So we took off. Remember, heading 280 was our first heading. Then we got a heading 230. Then we got a heading to 220 maybe? 210? No, this was the downwind heading right here. Oh no, this was the downwind heading. Yeah, we got a couple of different headings. Then we got the downwind heading, then we got the base, then we got the intercept, and we got we got on final. And landed. It's pretty nice. Look at that. And not bad. My oh, minus 97, Volanta says. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Who's right? Who's wrong? I am not going to have that conversation. <laughs> not bad. There's our taxi in. 
Very cool. Very cool. Okay. On to IFR flight number three. Yay. One more done. Let's go. IFR 3, look at this. This flight will take you from Providence Airport to Martha's Vineyard Airport using the published tech route, which includes the Victor 167 airway. Weather permitting, you will receive a visual approach at Martha's Vineyard. All right, let's do this. Okay. Hold on, chat. Do you need a break? Do we need a bathroom break? Do we need a break? I've met several people at Expo FSA who are in their 60s and getting their sport even... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Evan. It's very doable. It's a lot of work and a lot of money and a ton of fun. Yeah, you got it that right. It's all three things. Yeah. Too slow, too early. Bunnies, that might be it, buddy. That might be it. Because here's the thing, you bunnies. If things are normal, you should be able to disconnect the autopilot and the plane keeps on flying exactly the same. Right? That should be the norm. Hey there, Admiral Boreal. Uh, if you remember the other day, I said that I was interviewing my local airport as a ramp agent. I got the job! Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Congratulations, man. Happy for you, dude. Hey, what aircraft are you going to be working on? What, 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 like, uh, you know, give us a little sample. Okay, sorry, JP. So I'll repost. Uh, wasn't really paying attention, but think I heard that the plugs fall really quickly, which can be realistic. The airplane I flew earlier this week has fouled spark plugs after running for about two minutes. That's why you always lean on the ground. Wow, JP, okay. I'm gonna start leaning then on the on the ground, JP, and we'll see if that works, okay? That's awesome. Thank you for saying that, JP. Thanks a lot. You're talking about the 172P, right? Captain Crawley, what's going on, man? Yeah, DC. I know. I know. Sixty plus retired lost uh of money. What better thing to do than get a pilot's license? Yeah? Lo meaning lots of money maybe, Skipper? Is that what that means? Lots of money? Uh seems to work correctly to prevent fouling. Oh! Thanks, citizen. Okay. So it's on me. It's on me. Plus, it is an expensive hobby. It is, Vulcan. But it is also a hobby where you fly through the sky. You know? Haha! <laughs> Hi, Emily! How are ya? How's it going? Hey, Emily, it's good to see you. Hi, I'm Fabio. Yeah, and Fornax, uh, I guess it's your dad? <laughs> uh, Fornax is always here, so I'm always talking to him. Absolutely. Take care. Ah, Vulcan. That's another great one, too. Ooh, David Lewis. That's a good one, man. That's a good one. On Sunday, huh? World Mental Health Day. Nice. Haha. <laughs> yes. Yes, Skipper. That, yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Uh, you know what? I am. I'm going to grab a quick bite, and I'll be right back. In the meantime, I'll leave this up, and if you want to brief it yourself... I'm going to put this link in chat right now so you guys can go read what IFR Flight 3 is all about. Why is that? What? Oh, I see. Sorry. Slight, slight keyboard issue. Remember, I don't use QWERTY keyboards, so slight keyboard issue, but there it is. There it is. Haha, <laughs> Skipper, that too. That too. Vulcan, uh, I'm originally from Brazil. There's a bio here. I think it's exclamation mark bio. Yes, triple seven. Yes, buddy. It was awesome. Look, we just landed. We're here on the ground at Providence. Uh, and it was great. It was beautiful. Ah, hence the Bon Gia. Yeah, so Brazil originally. And uh, been living in the US. Man, for far too long now. <laughs> Been here for a while. Now I live in Columbus, Ohio, buddy. Columbus, Ohio. And, by the way, 777, we're going to roll straight into IFR flight number three, which is a, a flight from here to um, Martha's Vineyard using another tech route, but this time there's going to be an airway involved. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly, Rum, exactly. How about you, Vulcan? Where do you hail from, man? All right, guys. Give me a couple of minutes, and I'll be back. Enjoy your intermission.
Welcome back. Hello, everybody. All right. Time for IFR flight number three. Oh, look at that song ending at the right time. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So, have some of you guys read ahead? This Wings Over New England flight will take you from Providence Airport to Martha's Vineyard Airport to introduce you to navigation using low and route charts and airways. Start by visiting Sky Vector and locating KPVD. Got it. Right? We're there. We made it there. But now we need a new flight. And it's IFR, so instead of using this VFR chart, we're going to use the N route H12, N route H11, N route H10. No, those are high. Those are high. You need the N route L for low 33. There we go. Okay. So, Providence is here. Martha's Vineyard down here. And there is Victor 146. Okay, yeah, looks like it just links the two VORs, right? Okay, let's see what they say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, Skipper. You mean these flights here, the Wings flights? I don't think so, it's too many of them. Too many of them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. 60 hours of ATC weekend coming up later this year, no way. You could definitely do them all then, if you really wanted to, although it would be a lot of flying. Holy moly, 60 hours? What? That's crazy. I want to participate. I want to participate. By the way, there is a Condor competition coming up. Um, I think it's Monday. I think it's Monday. And it's awesome because there's 190 people signed up. And I think I may fly that one. <laughs> yeah, Yaris. Wow, on November 19th, we staff for 60 straight hours. Holy moly. You guys are incredible, dude. The passion these guys have for controlling is incredible incredible i know ninja i'm definitely gonna do more condor for sure dude for sure i actually flew some yesterday uh first blue screen ever on condor i got yesterday yesterday i wasn't feeling so well i was anxious i decided you know what i'm just gonna go fly i was even gonna do a focus flight where i don't have to talk even that was getting to me so i was like i'll just fly so i flew condor um and, uh, yeah, it was... I don't know why I got a blue screen, man. It's the first time ever. But I was actually pretty doing doing pretty decent in this competition, I think. Decent, like, middle of the pack to last in that sort of, you know, three-quarter group. Because let me tell you, man, these guys, there's people that fly this stuff a lot every day, and they're good. Really good. Hey, Harry, how are you, man? No way, Vulcan. Really? That was cool, man. I remember that. Was it really, Ninja? That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so let's keep going here, guys. They're waiting for us. Poor guy in Providence is still waiting, right? Um, okay. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. So we got it. We got it. Okay, then let's find the tech route. Remember the tech route here? So now we're gonna go... Providence to Martha's Vineyard, MVY. Tech route. Aha. Okay, so remember, the first and last are the actual airports, so forget those. So the route is PVD Victor 167 to Tudor. Okay. 167 to Tudor. Victor 167 to Tudor. Oh, look at that. They don't want us doing the 146. They want the 167 to Tudor. And then after Tudor, we're probably going to get vectored in. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. See why it's good to look up preferred routes. Because otherwise, I would just go Victor 146. That's not what they want. Not what they want. 
Interesting. <clears throat> no, Scub, I did not. Sorry, buddy. Was it? Wait, wait, no. Some time ago you told me, right? There's a really good, really. Okay, okay. Maybe I should load it up. Maybe I should load it up. They don't want you flying over rich people. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, nice little tower. Oh, look at those buildings. That looks nice. You know what? I think I'm gonna skip it, man. I don't want to restart the sim right now. Is this it, Scob? Alright. So. So we got it. Yeah, to tutor. Alright. Yep. As shown, is an area defined by the Providence UK. Each area segment has a polished minimum and root altitude. That's right. Yep. And in this case, we have two altitudes, right? We have that 1800 with an asterisk and the 2500. Look. Right there. Those two. Right? You see that on the airway? Airway is Victor 167. On the airway here, you have 2500, asterisk 1800. Then later, after Tudor, not for us, but just so you know, after Tudor, it's 3000 and asterisk 1800 right okay okay so what does that mean each airway segment has a published minimum en route altitude which is the lowest altitude you may fly along that sector the mea for victor 167 is 2500 msl which is shown above the black rectangular v167 label the 1800 with an asterisk is also listed indicates the mea can be lowered to 1800 msl when authorized by air traffic control in non-normal situations. I don't really know what the situations are. Immediately below the Victor 167 label, the 22 indicates the distance in nautical miles between the VOR and the next waypoint, which is Tudor, right? If you look at the next segment, you'll notice that it is only seven because between Tudor and Zunix, see that seven there? But the 29 is, hey, from the beginning until here, because it's 22 plus 7, and the 78 is between VORs. Okay. Also notice Tudor can be defined two ways. On the PVD-115 radio, yes. Or, look, the 330 radio from Martha's Vineyard. So it'd be good to have that dialed up too, wouldn't it? Because if the two cross, then we know for sure we're there. Because we can also do a DME, but, you know... Go fly it. Okay, spend some time reviewing the route. Okay. Too confident. Okay, depending which runways are in use, the party may be cleared direct to the Providence VOR to begin the route. Or you may receive a vector to join Victor 167 east of Providence VOR. If you're clear direct to PVD, the VOR, recall how to proceed direct to a VOR from your present position. We remember how to do that. Uh, when it does, make a turn. Yeah, for intercepting. Near Tudor, air traffic control will give you an approach to expect. If the weather at MVY allows, you'll be told to expect a visual approach to the runway in use. Otherwise, vectors for an ILS approach will be provided. Okay. If you reach Tudor and have not been vectored off your route by air traffic control, simply proceed direct to KMVY since that is the clearance limit assigned to your IFR clearance. Okay. Very true. Often, air traffic control will not give you vectors for a straight and final on a visual approach. Accordingly, you may be required to begin maneuvering and descending towards the runway on your own after being cleared for the approach. In some cases, air traffic control may issue instructions referencing legs of the traffic pattern, downwind, base, final, in the approach. The phrase cleared visual approach is your cue that no additional control instructions are coming and you should maneuver on your own to line up with the runway. Got it. <clears throat> Single coil ensures that you don't hit anything, but only guarantees nav aid exactly. Yeah, so single coil, I was actually under the impression that you could go down to that altitude without ATC clearance. Ah, it was the Saratoga DC, yeah. All right. Okay, so make it normal landing. Um, 
Hmm, that's nice. That's cool. Test standards. Files an appropriate cruise altitude for the direction of flight. Oh, yeah. That is above the minimum route altitude. Let's be careful with that. Correctly intercepts and navigates along Victor 167 and correctly executes the assigned approach at MVY. Okay. Fast piston or turbine. Yeah, we got a fast piston. Alternate airport. This rating can be completed between any two controlled airports. Uh, with it. Okay. So, we can use these airports so we don't have to worry about that. Alright. So, guys. That's pretty simple. Right? It's Providence VOR on the 115 radio for 22 miles to Tudor and then Tudor. We're going to get vectored into Martha's Vineyard or we'll fly ourselves there. We'll see. Minimum altitude is 2,500. So, I got to be higher than that. Um, we're going east. So, it's got to be an odd. So, 3,000. 3,000 is going to be enough. Let's climb to 3,000. So, let's file our flight plan. There's the pilots. Let's go. Flight plan. I'll get that guy going here. There we go. It's from Providence to Martha's Vineyard. Alternate is going to be Providence. Departure is going to be a uh, little 1557. Whoops. Okay, time and route. Uh, so we have 22 miles. Then we have another about 30 miles, maybe. Maybe 20. Yeah, so 50 miles. So it's going to be 25 minutes, guys. Short flight. Fuel available, we're going to refuel, so we're still going to have about two and a half hours. Cruise speed 120 or 150. Cruise out to 3000. Route is going to be PVD, then Victor 167, then Tudor, tech route. This rest here remains. Save that. File the flight plan. Okay. All right. We should have a new flight plan filed. Let me get back in the aircraft. Um, we'll call. Okay, so here we go. Providence is still on. One, two, three, six, seven. Let's get the eight is though. One, two, four, two. Might not be working. Oh, the radio is off. Maybe that was it? No, that, that radio was off. This was on. Hmm. A lot of six year tank has oh. been running one three zero on the rollout Providence Airport. I guess the ATIS isn't block, working. Four miles. So ATIS uh, right information hotel. Look, I'll show it to you guys. Three there it one is. Zero, three ten. Zero two zero eight eight ten set your miles, few eight thousand, few twenty five, twenty two, three zero one eight, so it's still the same. I lost one of five, okay. Continue your rollout on the runway and turn left. Transponder is required on all taxiways, okay. Notice weather, man. Hazardous weather, okay. Check. All right. All right, so we're good here. So let's call. Oh, oh. Forgot to put on the flight plan. It's wings IFR flight number three. Just changed it. Just changed it. Just so you know. And then your six Don't know if you guys were correcting me there or not, but thank you well, if you six did. Six tango to the right base, runway five, runway five, go to land, the wind zero four zero eight. So Ibanez. Uh, it's okay. The 2500 right, um, also shows the asterisk. Right the asterisk. Yo, our hamster. Thank you very much for those five months, dude. That's awesome. So the asterisk means at 1800 feet, you won't hit, you won't hit any terrain, right? But we're only guaranteed to receive the VORs at that 1800 or whatever is in front of an asterisk up to 22 miles out from the VOR. In this case, not a big deal because it's a short flight. But if the VORs are further apart than a total of 44 miles, then that asterisk altitude does not guarantee radio reception. The, yeah, the altitude without asterisk does. Right Alpha. Congratulations on passing wings VFR number one. Oh, that is the old route. Yes. The ramp, yeah, Alpha. Yes, Thank you. that is the old route. Okay, we'll get that fixed. Six, we'll get seven, that eight, fixed. Charlie. Providence approach. Uh, good morning, Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot. Foxtrot has information hotel and it's IFR to Martha's Vineyard for Wings IFR flight number three. Arrow Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot Providence approach. Clear to the Martha's Vineyard Airport as filed. 
maintain 2000, expect 3000, one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequencies on this frequency, squawk 5542. Papa Tango Tango Fox Strat Fox Strat is cleared IFR to Marta's Vineyard as filed. Climb to 2000, expect 3010 minutes after departure, squawking 5542, and departure frequency will be the same. Aero Tango Fox Strat Fox Strat, read back is correct. Wings IFR number three is approved. Five for departure, advise ready taxi. We'll call ready for taxi. Aero Papa Tango Tango Fox Strat Fox Strat. All right, 5542 is in. Altimeter setting is in. We don't have an altitude selector to put the altitude, so all we need to do now is start up and go! Alright, butters. We'll do it now, otherwise I forget, man. We'll do it now, otherwise I forget. Oh! What? What the hell? What is that butter snot? Dude, that is the result of that accident you were in? That's your car? Is that your car? Holy. Dude. So guys, Buttersnod was hit by a drunk driver, of course. By a drunk driver who didn't get a scratch, of course. Wow, dude, that door, that car did its job as best it could, it looks like. Buttersnod, what do you think? Do you think the car did a good job? Right. Do you think the car protected you as much as it could have, or... How do you feel about that? I'm curious. Man, I'm so happy you made it, Butters. Seriously, man. This could have been so much worse. So much worse. You went? Oh! Got it. Bye-bye. Okay. See you later. And care 533, continue down all the way to the full length. Don't, that's fine. Okay, end. guys, let's get this started. Otherwise, we're going to lose this battery, right? Reset. Okay, parking brake is set. Your selector is down. Avionics are off. Well, the radio is on. I'm going to leave that on. Mixture lean. Uh, magnetos are. What the? Uh, How does it. I had Good. this off, didn't I? Hey, Maybe I didn't turn it off. Maybe I didn't turn it off. Batteries the, on. Fuel quantity. Hole. We need more fuel. Oh, wrong way. Oh, okay. That's good to know. There we go. Annunciator panel. Check. Battery stays on. Flight controls. Anyway, back to flying. Butter it's not. Thanks for showing me that, dude. That's incredible, man. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, I know you have, you know, you have, uh, it's not like you don't have any issues. We get it. But dude, you're here, man. It could have been, like you said, so much worse. Kitty. That's Trek IR, Kitty. Oh, there we go. I need it. Thank you, baby. Appreciate it. Hi, Kitty. Hello. Flight controls are free and correct. Flaps are checked. Elevator trim is not neutral. Let's put it to neutral. Mike 2 for departure. There we go. Care 533, just let me know when you're ready for departure. Yes, sir. We're ready for departure. Care 533, turn right on course. In. Wind 0 Alternate eight. off. RPM is max. Fuel selector full is tank. They're all, both the same, so right will work once again. Okay. Throttle, half travel. Battery switch is on. Alternator coming on. Whoops. Beacon. It's on now. Whoops. There. It's on now. Navigation lights. They stayed on. Fuel pump. It's going to go low. Mixture. Rich. 
There it is. Clear prop. Clear prop. In case somebody didn't hear it on that side. There we go. 1500 on the RPM. We got oil pressure. Yes, we do. Yeah, mags are both. And we got oil pressure, okay? Oh, hello there. Okay. Let's do a ground check here because... Uh, well, no, we have runway 5, right? Hmm. Okay. We have quite a long taxi. Why don't we do the ground check during the taxi? So let's just call for taxi. Okay, so... I'm not going to do the ground check now, but... Did I do all this? No. Your 523 radar contact, say altitude. I'm gonna turn it on, sure. 900, climbing. Avionics. 1,500. Take care, 533. Proceed on course, maintain uh, your via power requested altitude. There we go. Oh, two Roy cats. Florida, one here uh, and one here. Wow, guys, guys it's the first time both three. cats are on stream. <laughs> Not for long. Not for long. Not for long. Okay, avionics are on. Radios are set. No. No, they're not. I need the VORs. One and two. One and two. Okay, let's go look at them. So, 1156, we got... We remember that. And then 1145. 1156 is there already. Let's put 1145 here. 1145. And the radio is 115 and then 330. So 330. And 115. Right? There we go. About there. Transponder is set, altimeters are checked, 3018, once and twice. Heading indicator, uh, it's going to be runway 5, so let's put that in properly here. There we go. Taxi area is clear. Indeed, parking brake, release, and then we'll test this Problem on the go. Information, India is now current, wind 050 at 9 altimeter... The more cats, the better. I agree. Airport or I agree. Airport aerial information. Oh. India one five now five one Zulu. Web zero three zero at niner. <laughs> we don't have to hear it anymore. The Providence approach. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot is at the transient ramp, ready for taxi. Aero Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot Providence uh, approach runway five taxi via Alpha Mike cross runway one six. And runway 5, taxi via Alpha, Mike Cross, runway 16, Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot. So what it means is this. Alpha, Mike, right? Well, he starts by saying, you're going to runway 5. So he says, runway 5, taxi Alpha, Mike, cross runway 16, so I don't have to stop, so I can keep going. Okay, so let's start this taxi, baby. Transponder goes on. Lights go on. They are. Okay. And Alpha is off here to the left. Gonna start checking my instruments here. There we go. That's looking good. That's looking good. That's zero. That's erect. That's within 100. That's zero. That's indicating properly. And stop at south. South. Okay. Instruments are checked. Brakes are checked. Taxi checklist completed. Alright. So ground check we're gonna do on the go here. We're gonna do it on the go. But first and foremost, I'm changing my flight here on Navigraph first. So it's from PVD to Martha's Vineyard, alternating KPVD. Got it. Whoops, a little too close to the edge there. Little too close to the edge. There we go. And our route is going to be... 
EVD, Victor 167, Tudor, and then direct. Okay. All right, so, sorry I'm uh, off, but I was actually not looking. I was looking at this screen the whole time. Um, so sorry about that. All right. Okay, very good. And there we go. Okay. So now we're all set up. Let's do our uh, engine check here on the go then. All right, so no parking brake. But I can take that. The mixture is rich. Prop is max RPM. The engine is going to have to go to a thousand, or sorry, 2,000 RPM. So that means if you don't hold her on the brakes, she's going to start speeding up. So you actually have to hold her on the brakes a bit. Go to 2,000. I can cross runaway 1.6 here, but I'm still going to check, make sure nobody's landing. Okay. All right, so I'm at 2,000. A little too much. There's about 2,000. Let's do mag checks. I'm not expecting them to be good because last time they weren't. Here, 533, contact Boston Center, 134.7. That's 100. Let's keep watching it. 120, 150. Good day. And 180, 190, that's too much. Pretty sure it's going to be the same on the right. Yeah, so I do have foul plugs. Okay. So I don't have good mags, but I'm going to continue. Whoops. Vacuum gauge is checked. Oil pressure and temperature checked. And meter checked. Annunciator test. Yeah, good. Propeller, let's exercise it three times. That's one. Oh. That's two. And... Whoops. That's three. Okay, we'll check idle next. Wait for it to come back to 2,000. I am on MP, yep. I am on East US. Mm-hmm. Aren't I on East US? Maybe, maybe. Hold on. Maybe I left it on West server. My bad. Hold on a second. We had problems with East last time, remember? Let me check my idle. So now no more breaks. Okay, so I'm probably on west, so give me one second, guys. Yeah, west. Sorry about that, guys. My bad. All right. Idle. Yep, pretty good. So propeller checked. Alternate air is off. Ox boost pump. I'm going to go to high now. Alright, before takeoff, reset this page to battery switch is on, alternator is on, strobe lights are on, landing lights are on, boost pump is on high, fuel selector, fullest tank. I'm gonna go to left tank now since we used the right tank a little bit already. Engine gauge is checked, they look good, mixture is rich, prop is max RPM. Flaps are zero, trims, neutral and neutral. Cabin door. Oof, oof. There we go. Closed and latched. Good thing there's a checklist. Good thing there's a checklist. Providence, Papa Tango, Tango Foxtrot. Foxtrot is holding short of runway five at Delta, ready for departure. Air Tango Foxtrot, Foxtrot, turn right heading one zero zero, wind zero five zero at Niner, runway five, clear for takeoff. Turn right, heading one zero zero. Clear for takeoff, runway five. Papa Tango, Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. It's one zero zero, not one one zero. There we go. Okay, here we go. Landing lights are on. Strobes are on. 
transponder is in out. Yeah, Rum, I think you're right about that. I think you're right about that. Oh, I think you have a helicopter over there. Alright, same thing. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to roll through. Looks good there. 42 inches. Very good. Airspeed is alive. Engine is looking good. And let's go fly. Keep the gear down for now. Climbing at 90. East US, Steve. East US. All right, gear up. And turn right heading 100. And I'm going to turn my autopilot on. Heading. For that 100, it's going there. And we're climbing to, remember, 2,000 is the initial altitude. I'm going to bring my power back to about 33. Passing 1,000. Pump's going to come off. I'm going to bring the prop back to 25. There we go. And close this guy. Otherwise, it gets a little, little too loud. A little too loud. By me a 90. All right, and in the meantime, here is my radio. Which is to the right, but he's going to vector us to it, so we'll see. Well, we'll see if he vectors us to it. <laughs> Two slider, I know, right? <laughs> I know. Arrow Tango, Foxhaw, Foxhaw, radar contact, say altitude. Passing 1,800. Papa Tango, Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Arrow Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, climb, maintain 3000, turn right heading 170, join Victor 167, resume mode navigation. And confirm it was right heading 170 to join Victor 167, uh, and climb, maintain 3000. Papa Tango, Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Arrow Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. I think Foxtrot, that's correct. correct. Yep, that's correct. 170. There we go. And we're going to see it coming up here. Remember, this is the other one, the second one. We're climbing to 3,000. Ah, she's coming in. Look, she's coming in. I'm going to start turning. I should probably have it. I should probably have it on F1 so it's less confusing, you know? Hold on, Butters. Hold on. Ooh, I'm almost on it. It's a little bit off to the left here. So I'm only using this and not the yellow. The yellow is on set on F2 right now, but I think that's confusing. So I'm going to go... Whoop, level off, level off, level off. Hold on. Actually, we're going to go to 30. There we go. All right, so I'm going to do 1, 5, 6 here. And one one four five here. Okay, so now we need radio one one five here. Watch that altitude. There's one. Whoops. One one five, right about there. So now I can actually go nav, and it's gonna follow that. And I could use my DME to be 22 to know where I'm a tutor, right? But I also have this other awesome tool, which is my second VOR. And so if I dial that to the 330 radio, then I should have the also, right, as another indication, when that centers, I should be a tutor, right? So I'm doing the level off here, but in the meantime, let me remind you of what I'm talking about. Look, tutor right here is also on the 330 from the VOR. How do I know that? 
Well, because we go and look at this chart over here, and this chart has the 330 from Martha's Vineyard. See that? As a Tudor identifier also. So, I can also find it based on DME, right? It's on the 115 and 22 DME, sure. But it's also the intersection of the 115 and the 330 from those two VORs. So, let me go and do that. My altitude is stabilizing, so that's pretty good. Let's set the 330 here now. And when this centers, I should be at exactly DME 22, and I should be at Tudor. Woo, okay, that was a little busy. So let me see, butter snot. One thing I get confused about is when I get instructions to turn after takeoff, when is a good time to start to turn? If I fly a small prop, uh, it won't take long to get airborne. Do I wait until I clear the end of the runway or do I start my turn as soon as there's no obstacles in place? Butters, amazing question because it's a question I had in my real flying, in my real flying, right? Um, by the way, let me edit some stuff now, guys. We got to clean it up for the second flight. So I'm updating fly live. There we go. Top is updated now. Now we even have a little progress bar showing how far we are. You see the little white bar? Okay, cool. All right. I'm also going to start the landing competition now. There we go. Landing competition is going, so you guys can start predicting what kind of landing rate I'm going to have. Okay, and let me update the route. In stream elements. All right, route is updated, so now you guys can do exclamation mark route also. Also. How are we doing here? Well, 12 miles, so just past halfway. And this guy hasn't started deflecting yet, so Tudor is still ahead of us. So, Buttersnot, that's a great question. I had that question in my real flying. In my real flying, I was like, when do you do that, right? So, let's see. Uh, two slider says you clear the runway, otherwise you could do another runway, or cut another runway, okay. Uh, when clear the runway for the remaining the pattern, within 300 feet of the pattern altitude, DC says. Um, nice, JM. Yeah, some people recommended that for me for the Seneca. Then uh, Evan says, if you're IFR, 400 is generally the standard for a turn after departure. VFR, the turn is your discretion. Most people usually wait until about 300 feet of pattern altitude, as DC says, or around the time you would turn crosswind. If you're going to turn significantly earlier than that, it's a good practice to advise ATC. Right. Or the other way around. If ATC wants you to turn as soon as possible, they will tell you that. Arrow, Tango, right? Foxtrot, Foxtrot, contact Boston Center, 134.7. Good morning. Boston Center, 134.7. Thank you very much for the work. We'll see you next time. Papa Tango, Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Okay, 134.7. Boston Center, good afternoon. Aero Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot, level 3000. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot Boston Center, hello. There we go, that's it. All right. So, if ATC wants you to turn as soon as possible, they'll tell you. They'll say, you know, after takeoff, right turn, heading 180, do not wait. Papa Tango Tango Fox until the end of the run. Do not wait. Direct Martha's Vineyard Airport. We expect the visual approach from the six. Proceed direct Martha's Vineyard expecting visual runway six for Papa Tango Tango Fox Trap Fox Trap. All right. Direct Martha's Vineyard. How do we do that? Well, guys, we already have the VOR dialed in, so all we need to do now is center it by doing this, right? Turning until. But remember, this is from. Ah, yeah, we're, we're going to yeah, fly five, two. Three, you need three, it in two, so uh, let's keep turning to the until you see two. And then to. we'll find... The ah, oh, there it is. Oh, oh, oh. There. One, four, five. I think it's heading one, four, five. So let's go to heading. 
One four five. That's going to take us straight there. And then we're going to take a look at the airport diagram and get ready for, it looks like, runway 6 visual. All right, so there's runway 6, right? So why don't we brief? Fox Trot, Fox Trot, the Vineyard Altimeter 3015, report the field site. 3015, and uh, we'll call you when we see the field for Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot. I'm not sure if I have it inside or not, so I'd rather not say Number it. Four, right? eight, 3015 on the altimeter. Field of Fort Ivar cancellation and frequency in the air on the ground or missed approach change to advisory. There we go. I'm a little bit low, so I'm going to correct for that. And let's start looking. Where is it? It's one of those islands, right? Uh, one of those islands. It's got to be straight ahead because I'm flying directly to it. So it's got to be in that island, but I can't see the airfield just yet. So we'll wait to report the field in sight. In the meantime, let's do this. So this is Martha's Vineyard at Martha's or Vineyard Haven, Massachusetts. Interesting. This is chart 10-9. Issued 6 August 21st, effective 12 August 21st, very recent. And it's for uh, KMVY with an airport elevation of 67. Okay. Okay, so two runways here 624 and 1533. Looks like 624 is the main runway. 5,500 feet, that's plenty for us. Looks like transient GA is over here. Control tower over there. All right, not bad. The airport has noise abatement procedures. Contact operations. Avoid residential areas southwest of airport. Let's keep that in mind. So it's going to be southwest over here. Well, final for six, maybe. Hmm. Okay. 24-hour prior permission required for unscheduled air carrier operations. That's not us. Okay. Hangar complex. Nothing else there. Runway 153. Not available for scheduled air carrier. Okay. 2433. Right traffic pattern. Okay, but that's not us either. We have some lights. We're not going to need those today. Envoy 2120. 100-foot width. Right okay. That's it. Pretty simple airport. Pretty simple airports. Um, they do have some instrument approaches, but guys, look at the day today. Hard VFR today, so we don't have to worry about that, right? We don't have to worry about that. Well, I hope your predictions are in, and we'll see what happens. Yep. FS Expo. RTEE, who is Evan, who is doing Boston Center right now, that's him. Um, yeah, he's he's saying don't don't worry about other runways. You can always turn at 400 feet of IFR unless ATC tells you otherwise, or or if you're VFR, wait until about 300 below pattern altitude. Um, but you don't have to. If you turn before that in your VFR, you're not going to get in trouble. Because everybody's expecting you to turn, you know? I was watching an AvWeb video um, who said, start as far back and follow runway heading for all the runway. If something is going to go wrong, it's ideal to have as much runway in front of you as possible. Yes, Ram, but if ATC asked you to turn like they did me, they're expecting you to turn. The reason they asked you to turn is either because they don't want to forget about your turn, usually not the case, or because they want to get you out of the way of the runway because they might have faster, bigger traffic behind you, landing, taking off, so usually taking off. So you want to turn as soon as you can, right? And they're expecting you to turn. Um, now, if you want to wait and fly over the runway all the way until the end and then turn, again, you're not going to get in trouble. Nobody's going to stop you. Nobody's going to stop you. He's going to stop you doing that. Spas, what's up, buddy? Let's go, man. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate those subs. Yeah, bus could be that, too. Yes. Cap OK is used in the U.S. 
All right, guys, so Martha's Vineyard is the big island, not the small one, and I don't see the airport just yet. It might be there, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to wait. I'm not going to risk it. Why? Because when I see the airport, the reason it says report airport in sight, this, the moment I say airport in sight, chances are he's going to say canceling IFR, cleared visual approach when we six. And then I no longer have his protection of his looking around me for other traffic. So it, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to stay under his protection, under his safety umbrella, then don't say you have the airport in sight just yet. Until you're 100% sure 3, 000, or until 3, 000, you're comfortable 3, 000, being outside of his protection 3, 000, and going visual. Maintain 3000 until established and cleared to the ILS for now. 3 3 ILS, 3676. 65 Alpha, if I didn't give it, give it to you earlier, I'm, uh, I apologize. You inspect the ILS. Calypso says, please, couldn't you have looked at what number was directly opposite when you hit the center? Three, 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 I could, three, but then I could, I could. Which way was my needle pointed? I'm trying to remember. Because I can have reverse sensing if I have the opposite setting. Calypso. And if that doesn't make sense, let me know and I'll explain. Man, I just seen your D6 YouTube video across tutorial one. I bought this aircraft yesterday. Amazing machine and really good video. Thanks and best from Rio de Janeiro. Alex, abraço para você, mano. Se precisar de mais ajuda, volta. Que a gente está ainda voando DC6 aqui direto, na verdade. And by the way, we're going to have the same thing going actually even better with the PMVG 737. Ah, nice, Kramer. It's a beautiful aircraft, man. Beautiful aircraft. Look, the camera is still back over. Defend and maintain 3,000. Defend and maintain 3,000. Well, we're over here. Cobra, uh, I speak Portuguese, I speak Spanish, and I speak English. The other languages I pretend to speak. What a day, what a day out in Martha's Vineyard, look at this. I mean, that's Martha's Vineyard, but you know what I mean. All right, guys, so I think the VOR is at the airport, but we got to check because I'm flying to the VOR, not the airport, right? Yeah, yeah, look, the airport and the VOR are pretty much co-located. The VOR is slightly to the north. So I should be looking for the airport. Hold on. Oh, my slightly off, slightly off. Ah, it's 141 right now, 141. Okay, so that's it right there. Yep, I have it. Center, Papa Tango Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot has the airfield in sight. There it is. Papa Tango Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, clear visual approach, runway 6, left traffic. Clear visual approach, runway 6, left traffic. Papa Tango Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. All right, guys, you see the runway we see now is not the runway Wait, we want. That runway right there is runway 15 because I'm on a heading of 15. So, I'm going to start descending. Okay. We're going to start descending and, and then we're going to join a left downwind for runway 06. By the way, another trick I use when looking like this, where where's the airport is, look at the island here. Right? The airport is about halfway in the center of the island, right? So I look out and I go, okay, island, island. So it's got to be around here somewhere. Ah, there it is. It's not going to be on the edge. Make sense? Convoy 2120, descent at pilot's discretion, maintain. Awesome, awesome, Alex. Abraço para você, cara. PD 240, envoy 2120. The Reaper OK says, all this careful formation flying in a 747, and then multiplayer just flakes out. Oh. Oh, that sucks, dude. Los analgésicos están haciendo efecto. Time for me to sign out. Okay, butters. Take care, buddy. Take care. Now, guys, we're still talking to Boston, right? We're clear visual approach. So we don't get on the local frequency to announce where we are. But we are free to maneuver.
Now, airport elevation here is uh, 67, so I'm going to go down to 1,000 feet. I'm going to go to a heading of 240. Because that's going to be my downwind heading opposite of 060, right? Level off at 1,000. Start slowing down. Ray 1, Romeo Delta, Boston, Hello. Hello, November 8th, Romeo Delta, you said, uh, slow down with air down to guard at 1,000 feet. Uh, four wings, DFR, 3, DFR, 2, All right. I think this is about right. Number 8, 1, Romeo Delta, wing, DFR, Okay, I'm going to go autopilot off. And now I'm just going to hand fly her in. 500 feet per minute on the descent. That might do it. I'm going to go with one notch of flaps. Gear down. Prop full forward. Bump on. And just gain 1186 radar contact. Direct AJ, climb and maintain level 280. Descending a little too fast here, gotta arrest my descent a little bit. For 625 Alpha over Nimoy, clear dial left 33 left approach. Clear dial left 33 left approach. For 625 Alpha, contact Boston Tower 128.8. Okay, we'll contact the tower once today. Oh, a little too low. Little too low. Add a little power here to stay level. Just until we get back on the glide. Now, we don't have clear to land just yet from center, so there we go. Foxtrot, Foxtrot, if I keep giving you the landing clearance, I apologize. Wind 0208, runway 6, clear to land. Runway 6, clear to land. We're about to call you. Don't worry about it. Uh, thank you. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot. All right. There we go. Looks like a decent glide now, so I'm going to start my descent. Gas. Undercarriage. Three green. Down and locked. Mixture. Rich. Prop. Full forward. Okay. We're good to land. Let's bring her in. Yeah. Yeah. Feels like a tiny bit of a left crosswind, I'm not really sure. Quite bumpy, so I'm keeping my speed up a bit. Now that I get closer, I'm starting to bleed off that airspeed. Look at that tree. Look at that lone tree, or maybe two, two, three trees there. Not a good place for you guys to be, is it, guys? Alright, here we go. Let's set her down. Nice and gentle. See if we can make a butter one here. Hey, 64. Not bad. Who got it? Rum! Rum guessed exactly 64. Oh. <laughs> uh, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. 64 is not bad at all, guys. All right. We got to cross this other runway here. Let me look at the uh, airport diagram again. Okay, there's a taxiway off to the right. A Bravo taxiway coming up on the right. And because I have the taxiway add-on installed, uh, I should have the correct... Should have the correct... Look. Oh, it says Alpha. Uh-oh. That is not the correct taxiway sign. That is not the correct X-ray sign. Whoops. I think we found a problem with it. Alright, flaps up. There we go. We're going to keep everything on again. We don't have taxi clearance, so we got to stop as soon as we clear here. Welcome to Vineyard Taxi via Alpha to the ramp cross runway 1-5. Have a good day. Alpha to the ramp cross runway 1-5. Uh, and, uh, sir, did we complete IFR flight number 3? Fox 
Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot A firm. Congratulations on passing wings BFR3. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, you guys do a fantastic job. I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Papa Tango Tango Foxtrot Foxtrot. Thanks, Evan. Thanks for flying in. We appreciate it. All right. There it is. Cross runway 3315, because technically it's a taxiway, right? But look, just like in here, it crosses the runway. How, how crazy is that? And the sim gets it right. The sim gets it right. Look. Right there. Crosses the taxiway and the runway. Kind of cross. Oh. Got a big one landing here. Now, this should be a ramp here to the left. I guess the sim didn't get that part right. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much, Speed Nut. Minus one would be a good target, yes, Stewie. One of these days. One of these days. All right, let's bring her in. Whoops, a little bit more. Okay, to the zero, get scanned on Turn these guys off. Parking brake on. There we go. Light comes off. Pump off. All the electronics are off. Yes, Sorry, they are. Oh, lights. There we go. Woo. All right. Mags off. Alternator. Nice. And just like that, IFR number three completed, guys. How about that? How about that? Not bad. Not bad at all. What a day. What a day. Hey, Sposs. Did I thank you for that, buddy? Thank you very much for the subscription. Guys, thank you very much. You guys know this is my full-time job, so I really do appreciate you guys supporting the channel like you do. You guys are amazing. Amazing. Uh, I remember to start using Fly Life today, so I'm going to try and use that more going forward. I know it's fun. Um, thank you to Boston and your controllers. You guys do an amazing job. Awesome, awesome, awesome job. And yes, uh, we have 21 more IFR flights to do until we graduate from the Wings flight program at Boston Virtual Air TCC. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Guys, thank you very much. Thanks for being here today. Who are we going to raid? That's what I want to know. Who are we going to raid? Let's see. Who's out there? Who is out there? Just begging, begging to be raided. Who, guys? Who? Um, what is that, Vulcan? Are you asking me if I know it? I haven't heard of it. So, Captain Crowley, I believe so. I've been invited by Nico to go fly his sim. And we talked about world flight, so I don't know yet. Gal, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Hey, look at that, Ibanez. Guided the ra the Okay. Be mint it is, buddy. Be mint it is. Yes, you can guide the raid. You can use your channel points to guide the raid. Let's go raid B Mint. She's awesome. If you haven't watched her, you need to you need some B Mint in your life. You need some B Mint in your life. Ah, you were using uh Flylight. Was wondering what it is. No, I didn't say Flylight. I wonder what it was, Vulcan. Hold on a second, guys. We got a couple seconds before we can raid. Um You said you're using Flylight. Flylight. Fly light. I'm trying to figure out when I said it to see what it was. Oh, fly live. Sorry, fly live. It's the stuff at the top. See that stuff at the top there? The prediction of uh, landing rate stuff. That's fly live. Fly live studio. Yeah. I think it's called fly live studio now. Yeah. The bar at the top and the prediction. And you can do METAR here on chat and stuff. That's all fly live. All right, guys. Hey, thank you all very much, guys. Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, I'm not going to promise that I'm streaming this weekend. That backfired last weekend. But if you see me online, 
don't be surprised. Hey guys, I love you. Have a great weekend. I'm looking forward to a next week. All right? It was a little rough yesterday, so I'm looking forward to next week. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Have a great weekend if I don't see you. Take care.